Oh, now we should be live. That scared me for a minute. Okay, because something came out red. All right, we should be live now. Let me just make sure that pops up over there on the... There it goes. Yes, there we go. That was weird. That was the thumbnail popped up for the first time. I haven't seen that. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, I was hoping Rosalita would see me kind of on time. Hi, Two Scooter. Hi, Pamela Patrick. Hello, uh, Marvel. Okay, Gail B. Janae Ann. Deborah Vancouver Nin. Chris Ree. Larky. Earthbound Spirit. Um, Nicole G. Oh, there's Rosalita Marie. See, Rosalita, I'm on time tonight. Pretty much. Very close, right? Good enough. Um, my thing gave me a little bit of a snafu tech thing. So I can blame that for two minutes. Let's see. Uh, Captain Lee fan, you still didn't get your... Hold on, I'm going to give you the link right now in here. Here's the link for the membership, uh, Captain Lee fan. This is the one that should work for you. That one. Carolyn, I was over at the other live last night. It wasn't that you really, I realized. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Got you, got you. No worries. Um, who's there now? Uh, Janine. So I, there's three trials going on right now, or are there four that we're following? Uh, the Taylor Parker, which is the girl, 29 years old now. She was uh, 27 at the time. Hi, Carolyn P. And so if you're not familiar with the case, here's what happened. She had had her tubes tied and she had a hysterectomy. She was trying to hold on to a boyfriend. It was not even about wanting a baby, okay? It was about hanging on to the boyfriend. Told the boyfriend she was pregnant. Used a fake belly. Posted on her social media that she was having ultrasounds. Um, that she was having a gender reveal. Did all of that stuff. In the meanwhile, she was looking for a baby. She showed interest in a couple of her pregnant friends. She was sticking out uh, OBGYN clinics and she finally honed in on a Facebook friend and someone whose engagement photo she took and someone whose wedding photo she took and that was Megan Hancock. And Megan was 21, beautiful girl, and she was having a baby girl that she was going to name Brax Braxlin, I think it was. And so she started to look up on YouTube how to do a cesarean at 35 weeks, how to care for a 35-week-old baby, yada, yada. She goes over to Megan's house. She bashes Megan's skull in. She cuts the baby from her. The baby is not doing well. Okay, but she puts the baby in the car and she is rushing off somewhere when she gets stopped by a state trooper. The state trooper's like, what happened? She thinks like, oh crap. So she says, oh, I this is my baby. I just gave birth on the side of the road. So he says, you both have to go to the hospital where they find out the baby is deceased. Okay, so she botched everything up, killed the girl, the girl's mother, Megan's mother, is the person that discovers her daughter in that state, okay? And so now this Taylor Parker is on trial. And it's the fourth day of the trial. So we're going to recap that uh, first. I don't know how many of you are following that. Um, but that's, that's what it is. Okay. So let me get the uh, graphic up here for, for you guys. And I'm going to go over some stuff from yesterday too, about the home life. Okay. 
Okay, so that is her in court. And so she has pled not guilty to capital murder and kidnapping. This occurred in October of 2020. And again, Reagan Michelle Simmons Hancock was 21 years old. And she was 35 weeks pregnant with her daughter, Braxlin. She was stabbed and cut more than 100 times. She had her skull crushed with a hammer. And that was in her new Boston, Texas home. And then after that was done, a scalpel was used to remove her unborn baby. Now, Taylor Renee Parker is also charged with the non-capital murder in connection with the baby Braxlin's death. The Assistant District Attorney Kelly Crisp told the um, Bowie County jury Monday that Parker, 29, acted not because she wanted a baby, like I said, but it was to keep from losing her boyfriend. And that's the thing. And... They had an OBGYN testified that she had a hysterectomy and she had her tubes tied. She could not conceive after the hysterectomy. She had offered $100,000 for a surrogate mother and told her boyfriend that she would have an induced delivery the day of the killing. So let's see here. Um... Her defense attorney, they didn't give a defense really, but just told the jurors not to fall prey to their emotions and to keep an open mind. They said it's a complicated case, factually and emotionally. The law is the lens and filter you must view these facts through. Sometimes it's not black and white, but a shade of gray. Now, Parker could get the death penalty or life in prison without parole if convicted of capital murder. And attorneys estimate they're going to present at least two weeks of testimony. So let's see what happened over here today. Because I, I want to show you what happened yesterday. So here. Okay. So on day three, a former friend and confidant of Taylor Parker's testified. That was Wednesday. And she testified about threats that Taylor claimed to have received from her own mother, along with Par Parker's obsession with her boyfriend, Wade Griffin. Angela, I think it's Pate of Sims, Texas, testified Wednesday that she met Parker in 2019 when Wade Griffin worked with her husband. Wade Griffin would be Taylor's boyfriend. She test Angela testified that Parker feared that Wade would leave her. And I quote her saying, she was obsessed with Wade and you could tell he didn't feel the same way. She was trying to buy him. When she was with him, she would totally glow and light up the whole room. He was everything to her. She would do anything for him. She also testified that Taylor discussed her family history, including an alleged inheritance that she was supposed to receive from her grandparents. They were old money. They owned a lot of land and oil and gas leases and made money on royalties. She said that her mother was angry about the money and was going to put and was going to Parker and put a hit on her with the Mexican mafia. Okay, so you, are you following this? She told this friend she is due to inherit a lot of money from her grandparents, but her mother is angry about it. So she's going to a Mexican mafia to put her hit on her daughter. She said that Wade would not leave her 
after the news came out about the supposed hit. So it sounds like she used this hit to convince her boyfriend that she needed someone to protect her. And she went on to say he felt he couldn't leave her with everything going on with her mother. She was hiding out at my house. She would come in the morning and stay until Wade got off of work. Supposedly, undercover officers were watching her. So sounds like she was living a bunch of lies. She, um, the girlfriend, Angela, testified that Taylor was very convincing. She would show text messages that were allegedly from law enforcement regarding the investigation. Hmm, sounds like somebody I know. You never doubted her. She had answers for everything, Angela said. And she testified that Taylor also told her that her mother was arrested and then committed suicide in jail. However, Taylor said she didn't want to tell her grandparents about her mother's death because they would not be able to handle it. Taylor then allegedly told Angela that her mother showed up at a family Christmas dinner and was actually alive. Sounds like a soap opera. She said she walked in the door and everyone was shocked. Her mother was alive because everyone thought she was dead. She also testified that she, Angela, and her husband, Roger, took Taylor and Wade to meet with Roger's cousin regarding alleged threats from uh, Taylor's family. The cousin is interim in Texarkana, Arkansas. Police Chief Bobby Jordan. Jordan testified that he met the two couples for about two hours and reviewed a file of alleged threats that was a couple of inches thick. He said most of the threats involved property in Titus County and oil and gas. It revolved around her family and their dislike of Wade, he said. But during cross-examination, Harrelson asked Angela about attending Angela's gender reveal party and if she thought she was enabling Angela by attending the party. And Angela said, who questions if a mother is pregnant? You don't. Never in your dreams would you imagine someone you know would do this. We were in this dome of craziness and we couldn't tell anybody. Now we know everything that happened. But at the time, if you're in the middle of it, you are just reacting and trying to do your best, Angela said. Angela said that her last contact with Parker was in July of 2020. Taylor's former mother-in-law, Deanna Parker, testified on Wednesday. She said she would frequently catch her daughter-in-law in lies and she would confront her about them. And I quote her saying, we would confront her about little things. She would tell a lie, then cover it with a lie, then cover it with another lie to get what she wanted. Deanna Parker's son, Hunter Parker, was married to Taylor Parker in 2017 and the couple briefly lived with Deanna Parker and her husband. While they were living there, someone told Deanna Parker that Taylor Parker was not telling the truth about some things. I did confront her and she told me the truth. She admitted she had not finished nursing school and that she was still married but in the process of getting a divorce. Despite confronting Taylor about lies, many days were ordinary, Deanna said. The women would cook meals together and shop together, and she said that Taylor Parker can be normal when she wants to be normal. If things are going her way, she can make the decision to be normal. Those decisions, those are decisions you observed her making. The assistant uh, county district attorney, Kelly Crisp, asked, and she said she knows right from wrong. Taylor is not crazy, Deanna Parker said. As she looked directly at the jury, she is normal as me and you. Harrelson objected to the use of the word crazy. He also asked Deanna if she spent any significant time around Taylor Parker after April of 2019. He said, if there was some progressive decline in her behavior, you would have not have seen it. No, she said. Harrelson also questioned Deanna Parker about how she could believe all the lies were part of normal behavior. Does that sound normal to you, he asked. 
She said it was normal for her. Taylor Parker's attempt to purchase a ranch on the Red River was also discussed during testimony. A lawyer named Blake Lawington, and this is um, very interesting because she was purchasing, well, a very expensive house, one that needed a deposit of $200,000. And the realtor that was taking them to see this and that was waiting for this deposit said they were driving a car that actually uh, did not fit the profile, but they give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And there are some odd people that have money and... <laughs> might be driving something like this. So they gave them the benefit of the doubt, but she never came up with that money. So during the testimony, a lawyer named Blake Loington, an oil company representative named Shelley Links, a banker named Stacy, and a relative known as Uncle Butch were all made up by Taylor Parker. See, she said she was the heir to, um, when she went, because when I was researching this, to, I forget what it was it a jelly company or half the other... But it, she was the heir to this one company, and she she was like an imposter of all kinds. There, there's got to be a Lifetime movie going to be made about her because, you know, she was uh, really BSing everybody. So they said there was all documentation, uh, documentation set up to make what she was saying credible, said the real estate broker Rusty Lowe. She was very convincing, and she was determined to make this purchase happen. Now, Lowe is a farm and ranch real estate broker with Century 21 in Paris, and he was contacted by Taylor Parker back in December of 2019 about a 1,500-acre pecan plantation and ranch called Pecan Point. He said that Parker offered $3.5 million for the property and said that she and Wade Griffin would pay for it with an inheritance from her grandparents. The realtor testified that Taylor Parker sounded serious and seemed to know all about ranching and that she was in a hurry to view the property. My first impression was they were in a little bit of a hurry. Everything had a sense of urgency. Everything was now, 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 Lowe testified. He also testified that he asked Taylor and Wade for a $200,000 in earnest money for the purchase. And that's when things started to unravel, he said. Taylor allegedly said first the money would come from her inheritance, and then she talked about it coming from an oil lease. On January 2nd, 2020, Taylor texted Lowe that the money wire transfer was not coming as anticipated. On January 13th, she told him she had switched banks because she was frustrated with the old one. It's getting a little sketchy, It's Lowe said. It's kind of unwinding over the quarter of a year. It finally got to the end of the rope and it finally got to the point where she could not justify how she was going to pay for it. Lowe testified that when he vetted Taylor Parker's supposed financial backers, she would scold him. We would get a message from Taylor that Uncle Butch didn't like it. He thought we should take his word for it, Lowe said. In March of 2020, Taylor Parker wrote two checks made out to the closing company in Oklahoma and left them with the realtor Lowe. On the same day, she called him and said the banks would prefer she not write checks, but instead wire the money. In April of 2020, the next month, Lowe received a message from Taylor that said they were going to have to pull out of the property deal. He asked Taylor to call him and described her as very upset. Her voice was broken and she was distraught. She told me it was an elaborate scheme put on by, put on by her mother. She told me she had been duped by her mother. The defense lawyer questioned why Lowe would believe emails from the bank would come from an AOL account. Did it seem unprofessional to you? Did it cause you concern? The whole thing caused concern. That's why we kept vetting, Lowe said. So that, that was... Uh, day three and let's go to um now day four is this this is some crazy mess huh
And one of her ex-husbands testified today. Okay, so let me just put, hang on one. Alex Tommy Wakasey was married to Taylor Parker from 2011 to 2018, and he testified. He said um, that he used a spoof phone number in September of 2020 to warn Wade Griffin that there was no way that Taylor Parker could be pregnant. So he said he sent the message to Griffin, hey, look at that. You know, this always sometimes happens. September 16th, 2020. Well, it's September 16th, 2020 right now. Yesterday was Jimmy's birthday. For those of you that missed it, yesterday was his birthday. Um, so September 16th, 2020, he sent a message to Wade after hearing that Taylor was telling people that she was pregnant with Wade's child. And he sent a message with a spoof phone number that said, I'm reaching out to you because I feel it's the ethical thing to do. In 2015, Taylor had a hysterectomy. She is not pregnant. She can't get pregnant. She is a con artist and she is lying to keep you around. He also wrote to Griffin that Taylor was in so deep, she can't get out. Under questioning by the Assistant County District Attorney, Lauren Richards, Wakasey testified that he met Taylor in 2011 when she was 19 or 20, that they got married within a few months. At the time they met, Parker, Taylor Parker had an eight-month-old daughter, Emerson, and she and Wakasey had a son together in 2013. I thought she was beautiful. I thought she was a loving person. The wife, everybody wanted, what Casey said. She was somebody I wanted to be with. But Taylor's lie soon became a problem, what Casey said. Looking back now, if I had known then what I know now, it would have never happened. It's like our whole marriage was a lie. You would confront her about it. It would turn into another lie. He testified that Taylor was very convincing and very manipulative. Wakasey also testified that earlier in 2020, Taylor called him and said she wanted to know if something happened and she split up with Wade Griffin if Emerson could live with me. Wakasey said, though he was not Emerson's biological father, he was basically her dad. And he told Taylor that he would take the girl if needed. However, he soon learned that Taylor and Wade were still together and she was telling people that she was pregnant. My son came home from her house that weekend and said, Mama was pregnant. I told him she could not be pregnant, but he said she was and she was going to have a girl. Well, Casey testified that he downloaded an app for a spoof phone number so he could contact Griffin Wade without causing drama. I didn't want him to know it was me at the time. He said at the time he didn't know Taylor had used spoof numbers to send messages to Wade. Harrelson, the defense, questioned with Casey about how quickly he and Taylor moved in together. He also asked about medical procedures that Taylor had when they were together. Well, Casey testified that in January of 2014, Taylor had a tubal ligation. In August of 2014, she went to Tijuana, Mexico with her aunt to have a gastric surgery. Her partial hysterectomy happened while she was in surgery to treat an ovarian cyst, he testified. During that surgery, doctors found endometriosis and the atopic pregnancy and asked Wakasey 
to make the call about performing a hysterectomy on Taylor. I guess she had an atopic pregnancy as well. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, and then the Texas Department of Public Safety Lieutenant Andrew Venable testified today as well, Thursday, about the continuous fraud for Taylor's entire relationship with Wade and the number of fictional people she allegedly created and the fake phone and email accounts she allegedly created for other people, including her mother, Shona. She's the puppet master of all these individuals, Venable said. As part of the investigation into Parker, Venable said he has reviewed all of the emails and text messages between Taylor, Wade, and the fictional people they communicated with. He compiled the messages in a timeline with a chart of all the characters, a portion of which they displayed in court. That's interesting, isn't it? Kelly Crisp questioned Venable about his report and the layers of Taylor's deception and how keeping up with the different stories shows the level of her competence. She said, if Miss Parker was incompetent, we would not be having this trial, would we? Correct, Venable said. It's a game, isn't it? She asked. It's similar to how a con man would work, Venable replied. Communication between Parker and Griffin, Taylor and Wade, also showed problems with their relationship. In a text message dated April 30th, 2020, Taylor texted Wade about her frustration with the amount of affection he gave her, saying, I wish you would kiss me goodbye. I want you to take into consideration you have not touched me in a month. I deserve you to put your arms around me and give me a kiss. You need to open your eyes and realize I am carrying your child. The text message continued with more, continued with more complaints and Wade responded with a thumbs up emoji. After Wakasey sent, uh, sent Wade the warning about Taylor not really being pregnant, Wade screenshot the message, sent it to Taylor. Wade believed the message was from Taylor's mother. Taylor allegedly began researching home births at that time. She also began searching online for hospitals out of the area since the message mentioned that local hospitals were aware that Taylor was faking a pregnancy. What's really happening is what Casey's information to Wade is being put on a fake Shona, Taylor's mother, Venable testified. Then uh, Melissa Mason, an office manager of Northeast Texas Women's Health Clinic in Mount Pleasant, Texas, testified that Taylor had been a patient of the clinic when she had her two children and then later worked there as a receptionist. Melissa Mason knew Taylor Parker had previously had a hysterectomy and knew that she could not be pregnant again when she heard in the spring of 2020 that Taylor Parker was once again trying to get an appointment for prenatal care. Melissa Mason testified that Wade Griffin called the clinic asking questions about the ultrasound and about Taylor's alleged pregnancy. However, she testified that she could not reveal information to him because of privacy laws. Mason was asked if hospitals were notified of alleged false pregnancy. Mason testified that doctors at the clinic reported it to the hospital, but she was not privy to the details of what was said. She was also asked if she or people in the clinic were ever concerned about how the false pregnancy story was going to end. And she said, never in our wildest dreams did we think it would end this way. It's something that happens in the movies and not in Mount Pleasant. Okay, and that was um, the end of day four. And it, there's going to be no testimony tomorrow. Testimony is going to resume at 9 a.m., 
Monday. So let's see what you think about this. And um, hi everybody. So what do you, what are you guys what are you guys thinking about uh, this trial here? You know, she might get the death penalty. Um, I don't see how the jury is going to find her not guilty. I don't even understand what, if or what they're doing with the defense at all. Um, yeah. It's a right? horrific crime, Carlin, isn't it? Yeah, and it, she sounds like a person, you know, very similar to Jabel's, who actually, you know, went the extra yeah. mile and made up these people to... Um, you know, give credibility to her fake story. Yeah. It's crazy the amount of people that are like that out there. It's terrible. It is. I, oh my gosh. I know. And we're learning more you and know? more about them um, yeah. on, on social media. It's just it's crazy. Right? Oh, she, she's a goner one way or the other. I mean, that, oh my, I can't imagine what her mother and the, the father of the baby, the, the family are going through. Right. Yes. Hey there, Casey Jones. Did you get that thing? Um, I think he's going to do a concert uh, pretty soon today. Yes, today was his birthday. The 15th was his birthday. And so, you know, soon here. I know that he's been practicing. So um, it'll, be, it'll be here. It'll be this month. He'll have, a, he'll have a concert this month. Okay, let's look at now the other trial. There's like, it's either feast or famine. And then, oh gosh, I forgot to even touch on Letitia Stouk was in court oh, yeah. today, so we have to talk about that as well. Didn't even put that in the video. There's a lot going on in the courts today. Thank you, Casey Jones. Uh, thank you, Casey. Let me um, go pull up the... Uh, I love that name. That's a lovely name, Casey, Casey Jones. Jones. yeah. Uh, what's his name? I'm trying to think. Do George, do George. We'll do George. George, George, George. So it was also day four of the George Wagner the fourth trial for the Roden family murders. And let's see here. So there was emotional testimony as relatives took the stand today. More first responders and civilian witnesses, including Kenneth Roden's son, Luke Roden, testified Thursday in the Pike County Massacre trial. The first two civilian witnesses to take the stand are related to one of the eight victims, Kenneth Roden. Now, George Wagner IV is on trial right now for killing him and seven other members of the Roden family on April 21st to the 22nd of 2016. He has pled not guilty to killing them all. So, earlier Thursday morning, Kenneth Roden cousin Donald Stone broke down on the stand as he cried and recalled finding his cousin's body on the morning of April 22nd, 2016. Let's see if we can see here. Most of the victims were shot several times in the head while they slept. Kenneth Roden, 44, was shot just once, right through his right eye. He was also found separate from the rest of his family. Kenneth Roden lived alone in a camper on Left Fork Road, about six miles away from where the other victims were found in their mobile homes on Union Hill Road. Stone recalled finding his cousin's lifeless body in bed in the bedroom of the Left Fork Road camper. The last time Stone saw him alive, he said they attended an auction together. The two men were very close. They grew up together. Kenneth Roden's mother fed Stone when he was young. Just about any time I was down and out, the man was there to help me, Stone told the jurors. A re recording of the 911 call he, was, he placed was played in court. The special prosecutor Angela Canepa questioned him and showed evidence of photos of the crime scenes. He sobbed and put a white tissue to his face at one point, unable to go for several minutes. Kenneth Roden's mother was in the courtroom, visibly upset at the photos that were being shown, and she wrapped her arms around another relative sitting next to her, and they sobbed. 
George Wagner IV silently watched from the defense table where he sits each day between his attorneys. Kenneth Rodin's son, Luke Rodin, was the second person to take the stand. Luke was one of the first people to enter the camper on Left Fork Road on April 22, 2016. He knew that his uncle and cousins had already been killed and wanted to check up on his dad. So he went with his cousin, Donald Stone, to his dad's camper to tell him what had happened. Luke said that he was standing in the living room when Donald came running out of the bedroom. He ran past me, told me to get out like he'd been shot, Luke said on the stand Thursday. <coughs> he talked outside of what this trial has been like for him and his family. He told the prosecution that he and Kenneth would ride together to work on the morning of April 22nd. He pulled into the driveway, but he did not see the house lights come on. So he left and went to work. Around 8 a.m., Hatfield said that he got a call that something had happened on Union Hill. He tried calling everyone in the Rodin family, but no one answered. He sent them a Facebook message to Hannah. Facebook showed someone read the message. However, no response came through. George the Fourth's, the guy that's on trial, younger brother, Jake Wagner, said his mother, Angela Wagner, will testify against him soon and are considered the star witnesses in this trial. Both pled guilty for their roles in the slayings last year. It remains unclear, however, if the public will be able to watch and listen to their testimony. Pike County Common Pleas Court Judge Randy Deering allows all witnesses to, to decide just before they testify whether they wanted to be filmed. While Kenneth Roden's relatives allowed their testimony to be shown on Thursday, several of the other witnesses have not. This includes top law enforcement officials who took the stand on Wednesday, such as the Pike County Sheriff Tracy Evans and Sheriff's Corporal Adam Ball. Ball was the first law enforcement officer at the crime scene where Chris Roden Sr. and his cousin Gary Roden were found. They were the first victims located. Kenneth Roden was the last. Roden's sister and her friend testified Tuesday, kicking off the state's case. Like Ball, they described finding Chris Roden Sr. and Gary Roden uh, ball in one of the bloody campers. Kristen Roden Sr. was shot six times in the face and once each in the chest and stomach. He also had defensive wounds. Ball told jurors Wednesday that there was so much blood when he walked into the front door that he had to climb over a treadmill and other furniture to avoid disturbing the crime scene and reach Chris Roden Sr. and Gary Roden. Their bodies were found lying together on the floor at the foot of the bed. Hmm. The trial itself is going to last about six to eight weeks, prosecutors say. These murders are considered the state's biggest and most complex homicide investigation. Jake Wagner, 28, was convicted of eight counts of murder and 15 other charges, including gun specifications, conspiracy, burglary, possession of dangerous ordinance and tampering with evidence. He admitted to killing five members of the Roden family and shooting a sixth and spying on the family before the murders, tampering with evidence and obstructing the year long search for the killers. In exchange, prosecutors say they'll drop the possibility of the death penalty for the, for his entire family. And he agreed to serve eight life sentences without parole. His lawyer said Jake knows he's going to die in prison without any judicial relief and he is being held at the Franklin County Jail. And this again is everyone that was killed those two days. Angela Wagner pled to conspiracy to commit aggravated murder several counts of aggravated burglary, tampering with evidence, and other charges as part of a plea deal. The remaining eight counts of aggregated murder, aggravated murder were dismissed. The prosecution is recommending that the 51-year-old woman serve 30 years in prison with no possibility of the death penalty. She is currently being held at the jail in Delaware County. 
George Wagner IV's lawyers have argued the confessions of his brother and mother last year prove that he didn't kill anyone. The prosecutor herself has agreed in a December 2021 hearing that Wagner IV didn't kill anyone. In the state of Ohio, however, someone can be sentenced to death for an aggravated murder conviction if they help plan it or cover it up. The judge denied a motion last year from Wagner the Fourth lawyers to dismiss the eight aggravated murder charges. Okay, uh, let's see here. All right, so. So we'll have to see, and if, I don't know if, they're, if the mother and the uh, brother are going to allow their testimony to be shown. So we'll have to see about that. And then... Harlan, you got um, a super chat from Casey there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Let me see. Uh, oh, wow. Thank you, Casey. I know. Appreciate so nice that. of her. That's very nice of you. Thank you very so much. So sweet of her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your Thank little you. thing didn't go off. You know, normally yeah. that, that makes a noise. Yeah, no, maybe so I was reading. Sweet. I thought I might have heard something, but thank you so much, Casey. Appreciate it very much. Okay, then we have, who do I have? We did. Uh, also, Casey, I need you to email me. Sorry. I sent, I think I sent you something about her. Okay, cool. For some reason, she couldn't see my um, PayPal request. And I don't know if I sent you a screenshot of it, Casey. But is there anything wrong in the email there that, or a reason that you see that you wouldn't see it? Is that the wrong email? Let me know. Okay, so let me go back here and where did we go? We went to tail. We did Taylor Parker, George Wagner, uh, Alex Jones. Okay, yeah, I can talk about Alex Jones. That even uh, they again the entire day was with um, the woman that's the corporate representative, and they went from everything to all of the clickbait stuff that Alex had on this Infowars shows where. He had uh, about the um, Batman movies when they mentioned Sandy Hook, that it was a reference to the shootings, even though Sandy Hook is in New Jersey. And that was what they were referencing when they talked about um, the slasher films. Like we talked about that just happened to be named Sandy Hook. Every little thing they tried to say, oh, look, they knew about it. They knew about it. Um, they talked a lot about the uh, Helbig guy and the lies that he was putting out there, the way the families were harassed, um, the way, you know, with every one of these conspiracies, the clickbait, how his audience was growing, how his, you know, advertising revenue was growing, how everything was growing. So he had every reason to continue it. And um, calling the, the, the parents again, actors, so they, they were just going all over that. It was still continuing today. Let's see. Um, just about how they, they knew things were lies. They went in with what they knew were lies and they just continued it. They knew that this hell big guy was lying about stuff and they just, they just ran with it. And they pretended they were a news source. So they were going um, on locations to places and they were saying that they were a news source. They weren't saying they were entertainers. They weren't saying they were comedians. They weren't saying anything of the kind, okay? They were saying that they were a news source. So that's, um... oh, you got, okay. I didn't know, Casey, is, is that the right address for you? Thank you. Okay, good. And I don't know. I think Nicole was having a similar problem. So maybe that got straightened out too. I don't know. Hope so. I'm always having issues though. So really it's user error for me. <laughs> um, that is the real issue here. So yes. Thank maybe, you so much. Yeah, I got the She emails. wasn't able to see mine, but now she said she can. So maybe she can see yours too. I don't know. But okay. Yeah. So that, that, but basically that was Alex Jones. They went for the day. They'll be back tomorrow. I believe they are having testimony tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is Friday, right? Yes. And now let's look at, uh, what happened to Letitia Stauk because she had court today. Let's see what we can find out there. There's only so many cases you can watch. And plus I thought you watched all this. I missed all this. <laughs> 
Well, I was, I had the Jones stuff, but I was still baking a cake and uh, trying to do all that stuff. But uh, I, had, I, I was busy today, Carla. Yeah. Very busy. Okay. So let's see what happened to Leticia. So what happened to her? How come? Let's see here. She was following. Do, 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 do. Did it? Did something happen to her today? Okay, because it says, let's see. Following the recent return of her mental health evaluation, Letitia is set to return to Colorado's eighth, uh, fourth judicial district court on Thursday afternoon. In her most recent court appearance on August 25th, Judge uh, Gregory Werner stated that Stauk was in the sane, that she was found sane in her mental health evaluation conducted by the Colorado Mental Health Institution at Pueblo, Institute at Pueblo. A new evaluation by an out-of-state doctor was requested by the defense at that hearing. The defense also requested to have Letitia remain at CM. HIP while the new evaluation was being conducted. Thursday's hearing, which was today, will discuss the issues regarding her residency at CMHIP and the new scheduled evaluation. She has been awaiting trial for more than two years on charges of killing her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon, in January of 2020. Delays have occurred in part due to the need for the mental health evaluation. Initially, she pled not guilty to the charges filed against her, but in February, she was granted permission by Werner to change her plea to not guilty by reason of insanity. In addition to a murder charge, she faces charges of child abuse and tampering with evidence, and if convicted on first-degree murder, she faces life in prison. She also faces a second case in which she's accused of attempting to escape from the El Paso County Jail, and she was arrested in South Carolina in March of 2020 and has been in jail since after she has been extradited back to Colorado. But I'm not seeing what happened. Hold on. What happened today? And I know that somebody, let me see here. So what happened in her hearing? Oh, here we go. Oh, disturbance leads to delay in um, her sanity hearing. After nearly an hour delay, accused murderer Letitia Stauk appeared in court on Thursday for her sanity evaluation status hearing. The judge discussed a request from the defense for more mental health tests and where those tests will be conducted. The judge said he wanted to better understand how the tests work and what the defense is hoping to achieve with the additional tests. He also said that he wants to make sure all security concerns are dealt with. A hearing to address those concerns was set for October 13th. The judge also warned Letitia about the tardiness following a nearly hour-long delay and reminded her that he can order deputies to use reasonable force if necessary to ensure her appearance at courtroom hearings. Letitia allegedly caused some sort of disturbance that led to the hearing being delayed. Hmm. Okay, so... Interesting. So October 13th, that she caused an hour delay. She seems to be causing trouble all the time, huh? And let's see here what we have. Um, before we go into that, somebody was saying that there was uh, another something on Lori Vallow. Oh, will it be testified? So the judge heard mo heard motions on whether it be testified. Lori Vallow, a motion hearing was held Thursday. It was a busy day to determine whether or not cameras will be continued to be allowed in the court proceedings for Lori Vallow Daybell. Her attorneys, Jim Archibald and John Thomas, filed a motion last month to ban cameras from the courtroom in future court proceedings, including Chad Daybell's trial, which is set to begin in January. 
Prosecutors Rob Wood and Lindsey Blake filed a response to the motion in support of the camera ban. Daybell and her husband, Chad Daybell, are facing multiple counts of first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder for the deaths of 7-year-old Joshua J.J. Vallow, 16-year-old Tylee Ryan, those were both Lori Daybell's children, along with Chad's previous wife, Tammy Daybell. Lori appeared in court wearing a pink blouse and tall black heels with freshly curled hair. Entering the courtroom, she was seen smiling but became noticeably more tame with her emotions and facial expressions than in a hearing last month. Following that hearing, her defense team filed the motion to ban cameras. Archibald argued that by allowing cameras in the courtroom, his client will have to prove her innocence instead of the state having to prove her guilty. The defense and prosecution noted that while they believe in the constitutional right to the freedom of the press, they don't believe it includes broadcast. We let the media police themselves, and what did they do? They put microphones on our tables and cameras right in front of our faces, said Archibald, referring to the August hearing where two cameras were used and microphones were placed on tables. Both sides say the incessant media exposure is impeding on Lori Daybell's right to a fair trial. 30 minutes of the broadcast was zoomed in on my client. What was the purpose, said Archibald. She didn't make an argument. All she did was whisper to her lawyers. There was no point. Okay, so East Idaho News and 32 other local, state, and national media agencies are opposing the motion. Steve Wright, the attorney for the media, argued that news organizations followed a court order during last during the last hearing and did not make any unauthorized steps while recording and broadcasting. It is regrettable that counsel feels misled that they didn't notice the microphones, but they were approved first and foremost, along with the cameras, said Wright. There is a significant difference in telling this court that the courtroom should be open, but only to people who physically want to come and sit in the courtroom because if it's broadcast to other people, her rights are now jeopardized. Judge Boyce interrupted Wright to disagree, saying at some point, if there is so much saturation that it presents a presumption of guilt, I think that it's entirely possible in that case. And I'll tell you, I'm quite concerned it's, that it's happening in here. Boyce also noted that he does not know the members of the media, who they're employed by, or who pays them, so he cannot personally guarantee that they will always follow the rules. Although... There have been no circumstances thus far where the media has not followed any courtroom protocol in this case. Wright said that pretrial publicity was not going away and the motion was an inappropriately extreme response to actions that were approved by the court. Judge Boyce ended his conversation with Wright by stating, I'm very concerned that this goes beyond access. This goes to creating a financial enterprise that revolves around this case. The judge did not immediately make a ruling and said a written decision would be forthcoming. After the hearing, Larry Woodcock, J.J. Vallow's grandfather, told East Idaho News he doesn't want cameras banned from the courtroom. To me, the issue is not the cameras or the audio. The issue is Lori playing to the camera. Absolutely, cameras should remain. I want my family and our friends and the people that follow us worldwide to see this. They deserve to know what's going on. A bigger concern to the Woodcocks is that J.J. and Tylee's bodies have still not been released by officials. That's terrible. All I want to do is bury the kids. I mean, come on. It's been three years, said Woodcock. J.J. is in a vault. He's in a freezer. Judge, let us have him. Let us have them so we can bury them. In addition to the motion to ban cameras, two other motions were discussed. One which would allow Lori to appear in court in street clothes. Although she has appeared in street clothes in previous hearings, according to her attorneys, it was never in writing. Her attorneys argued that having her appear in street clothes helps with her right to a fair trial. The prosecution said they have no opposition to that. And Boyce granted that motion. Another motion was filed in July to incorporate state and federal constitution grounds in support of future motions for Lori. Her attorneys argued that all of her constitutional arguments need to be preserved in case the jury eventually comes back with a guilty verdict and she's sentenced to the death penalty, which could remain in litigation for decades. So that we have, and um, we're going to go to the headlines now. So let's 
Let's go to that because there's quite a few headlines now. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with the cameras. So both the defense and the prosecution do not want them. The media is fighting for them, of course. Yeah, I don't think they should be going for the death penalty, Carla. You don't what? You don't think what? I don't think they should be going for the death penalty. It's too dodgy. I don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they can say they can say that it was the brother that did everything and he's dead. Well, we'll have to see. You know, know, if they've got good lawyers, like they can, you know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Because the brother's phone pinged at, at his place as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They, yeah the brother's gone serious... now. Yeah. That's, that's a very good possibility they're going to say that. Yeah. You know. I think it would have been safer just to not go for it. Like. Yeah, we'll see. An Indiana mother faces multiple charges for allegedly shooting her husband on the side of Interstate 69 in Fishers. Shalia Davis, 38, and Curtis Williams III had reportedly been out to a movie Saturday afternoon with Davis's 12-year-old son to celebrate the boy's birthday. Police were called to the scene on the side of the highway and found Williams lying on the road with Davis standing over him holding a gun. She shouted out that Davis, William shouted out that Davis had not shot him. Investigators discovered that she had in fact shot him. Davis and Williams were reportedly married in April and have 16 children between them. Wow, uh, court documents say Davis and Williams had been arguing over text messages that Davis received from an ex-boyfriend the night before in which the ex said that he, would, that he was interested in her romantically. Williams reportedly was angry about the texts, but apparently the argument was put aside for the next day after the birthday movie. On the way home, however, the couple argued again over the texts. Davis told investigators that she was surprised when Williams brought them up again because she thought they resolved the matter. She said she became angry when he accused her of infidelity in front of her son. And then she said Williams punched her several times in the stomach, accusing her of being pregnant with the old boyfriend's child. At that point, she said Williams pulled over and ordered her out of the car. And both of them got out of the vehicle and Davis said she called 911. She said she shot him when he threatened to blow her head off and charged at her. Williams had a different story. He told investigators that he initially said she didn't shoot him because he didn't want to get her in trouble. He agreed that he had brought up the issue of the ex-boyfriend's text messages in the car, but he said that when he did, Davis threw a drink on him and ripped off his shirt. He pulled over to the side of the road and used his shirt to clean up the drink, and then he got out of the vehicle, he told detectives, he was, he said something about a divorce to Davis, which made her angry. She told him she was pregnant and threatened to kill him and his children. William said he backed away and heard a gunshot, and then he realized he'd been struck in the arm and abdomen. Medical examiners say he has several gunshots and a broken arm. Witnesses said that Davis was the aggressor. Davis was arrested on the scene and faces nine charges, including attempted murder, aggravated battery, battery, domestic battery, intimidation, criminal recklessness, and pointing a firearm. Oh, my goodness. And let's see here. Um, oh, my goodness. Who's that? Wow. Thank you so much, Casey. That is really very, very, very generous of you. I appreciate that so much. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay. That's really great. That's unbelievable. Okay. Let's go back to this here. Where yeah, K back? Casey's son isn't well, Carlin, so we're just saying prayers for him. Oh, that's right. Is he any better? Is he any better? I think he I think he is a bit better, but I think she just, just would like help. us all to, to pray for him. Needs okay, so Casey, all right, definitely. What what is um? Do we know what's wrong? So we. I, I don't. What's his name? Because a lot of people. Do you want to leave his name? His name is Noah, Noah. Noah Charles. A beautiful name. Noah Charles. Noah Charles. Absolutely. Um, we'll be praying for Noah Charles. Casey, I light a candle for him in the church tomorrow because I'm I'm going down to light a candle for somebody else. So I most definitely will. Noah Charles. Noah Charles, yes, absolutely. 
Please pray for my son, Noah Charles. Yes. Okay, yeah. We'll all pray for Noah Charles. Maybe Janae, Janae, would you like to come up and um, who's good at, wasn't it Janae that, who was it that said such a good prayer the last time? Who was that? Was that Debbie D? Was it Debbie D or was it Janae? Does anybody remember? I think it was Debbie D. I can't remember, Carla, but I do believe in the power of group prayer. Yeah, Debbie, is definitely. Debbie on here? I think Debbie D. It's very powerful. I don't know. I mean, she just had an operation. Debbie, are you there? Or maybe Sharon wants to, to or Janae, who wants to see you, which one of you is really good at, because one of you is really good at one we did recently. And you said a really great prayer. Janae, Debbie, Sharon. I she just had an operation. Debbie, yeah. are you there? Yes, oh, I'm here. Do you want to say um, Casey Jones is here and said her son Noah Charles is really needs prayers. He's uh, not Sharon. he's sick. Sure. And would do you want to say a prayer for us all right now? Yes, I will. All right, thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord, upon asking you through your son, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lift up KC Jones' this son to you, Noah, Lord. You see all the needs that is needed for his healing, the, what he needs, and we ask you, Heavenly Father, we come before you joined as one, and those that are joined as one, that you are in the midst. I pray, Father God, that you send down healing touches, touch his head, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Touch him and heal him, Heavenly Father, that only you can do. I pray for Casey, God, and I lift her up unto you for you to give her peace, give her strength, give her every piece of grace that she needs, Father God, to stand there and be strong for her son. The Heavenly Father, I pray over this community, and I ask God that anybody that is in need, that you touch them, God, whether it be in mind, body, spirit, financially, in any means, God, because only you see what each of us need. And Heavenly Father, I praise you for your word, and I praise you for your grace, and I praise you for your strength, for without you, Lord, we are nothing. And with you, Lord, we can do all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 That's so beautiful, Debbie. Beautiful. Yeah, it's very nice. Beautiful. Very emotional, that, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is he, is he 17, Casey? Is that what you said? He's 17? I think she said that the last time. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Yes, okay. Oh. 17, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, that must be hard. It, um, Hi, Debbie. They don't know what's wrong. Is he in the hospital right now, Casey?
you keeps, just keep seeing him seizing. He's having seizures. Oh, he's having seizures, mm. right? That's right. Huh. That's hard, Annie, that, that, that they haven't found a diagnosis. Yeah. That must freak you out when it happens. Mm. And, and he doesn't have a fever. They're not coming from. Yeah, that's crazy. And he you never think they, 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 they take him into hospital and. I think he. Until they is, diagnose he the him, you know? is he in the hospital, Casey? He just came home. He just home. came home. Well, they wouldn't have released him if they were, you know, would they? I don't know. I, if there was something seriously wrong, they wouldn't risk hi, it. Like, girl. So is that's he, that's a positive sign. Like, Is he on anti-seizure medication, Casey? And is there any improvement? He was. Hmm. Is it that he's not taking it or? No, I think he, they just don't know. He was at a children's hospital. Yeah. They're usually very good there. I'd be just worried that he, he, if he's not taking his medication. Oh, Catholic. Catholic. Hmm. And why did they stop it, Casey? Like, or has he decided he doesn't want to take it? No, he is taking the medication, I believe. I, it's not that. He I is. thought she said that he was taking it. Oh, I think she meant he was in the hospital. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I think he is taking the medicine. A stressful time for you. Casey. Oh, it just happened. Mm. Oh. So he's still having seizures, even though he's on that medication, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, I'd ring the hospital again. Yeah. Hi, Betsy. They, they don't, don't know. They don't, they don't know, know why. Did he have COVID or anything? You'd wonder, like, is it, could it be a side effect of something else that happened? He didn't get hit on the head or fall or have any trauma like that, right? Did he? I can't figure it out. Like your first thought is, um, God, I can't even think the name of it. Epilepsy. Or a metabolic, maybe. Right. He's so young, like 17. It's so can't, useful, isn't can't it? Can't figure out what's happening. Casey Jones, have you gotten any other opinions or taken him to a neurologist, a different one, or what has been done so far? Yeah. Second opinion, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wish you would call in. Yeah, if do you want could. to call in, Casey? You want me to send you the number and you could call in and tell us what's going on? And maybe somebody can, uh, um, I don't know, maybe somebody might have some experience or something. You never know who could be listening. Yeah, that's true. I'll send you the number if you feel like calling in. Um, Like, was he in an accident or anything? As you said, did he did he bang his head? Or... Did he play sports? I'm yeah, football. yeah, or football or anything. I just sent. Like they might think it. nothing of it at the time, but if he was at a children's hospital, the odds are pretty good that they. They're usually good at the children's hospital. Yeah. 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 They're yeah. gonna figure it out. They're gonna figure it out, Casey. They will. They will, Casey. We're we're gonna be praying here. Absolutely. I can understand her fear, though. You know. Yeah. 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 But I, I'd be I'd be hopping on the phone again straight away, and I, you know, mm. even for advice. 
if he's continuing to have seizures, yeah, I would be very yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, especially it's still since, scary like, for the now. mother. She's not. Oh. She's not. Um, you know, she. He, you know. If it continues, he, uh, I'm sorry, Sharon, if it continues, I, I mean, and at the, the frequency it's at right now, if it gets worse or continues to get worse. He will live a life that he wants. He will, Casey. Yeah. yeah. He and will. He will. Know. But don't feel bad taking him he back said, to I the was... hospital either. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Did he have seizures yeah, because... What I want to know is, um, with him on the medication and while he was in the hospital, did he stop having seizures in the hospital and they sent him home and he's having them again? That's what I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Good point. He will be Casey. Oh, we can all understand. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the stress and worry of that. Scary. Yeah, Debbie, yes, I've heard about that as well, about getting infections from, from water, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Oh, there's nothing to thank us for, Casey, you're more than welcome. Yeah, no, definitely. But the number is there if you do want to call in. Yeah. And if you get worried about them, just ring the hospital. It doesn't matter what time it is. Like they're 24 mm 7 -hmm. hospitals. Okay. I'm just yeah, surprised that's... they let him out if he was still ha without diagnosing him, if he's still having seizures, you know? Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we'll pray. Yeah. Absolutely. I had a cousin that had epilepsy, but I don't know much about it. See, my uncle, one of my uncle, my father's brothers got it after uh, he was hit on the head very hard with a baseball bat during like a robbery, I think it was. Wow. So mm -hmm. long ago. And then, yeah, then he never had seizures before that. He, that was from the head trauma. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the head is dodgy spot if you get hit there. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. You're Hi, Danielle. Hey, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Yeah, okay, Casey. Well, Casey, I'm still going to pray for you, yeah. too, because, yeah. you know, I know I it's hard on you being his mother and watching him go through this and you need strength and peace too to help yeah. help him. So. Hmm. How's your mother doing, Danielle? Yes, he does, Janae. Mm -hmm. He knows them all. Can you hear that racket in my kitchen? <laughs> not too That's, much. Oh, oh, You're not. trying not That's to be a helicopter. Water yeah. filter thing that comes on at night. Well, oh, my hopefully goodness. they're going to figure it out and... Uh, She's doing better. That's good. That's good to hear, Danielle. Casey, I mean, 
if he's continuing even after just getting home and he's on this medication, take him back. Don't let it keep going, which right. I know you probably would, but I just feel better saying that. <laughs> right. You know. Better to Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, her ribs. Oh, I'm sorry, Danielle. Yeah. So, so um, there is a uh, is this developing story. I didn't hear this. Uh, very strange. Um, here. In Madison, Wisconsin. Let's see. I'm going to have to change the time of that water thing. Um, it comes what? on at this time every night. But usually I'm not up at this time. So there is a... Um... There was a very odd uh, murder-suicide in Wisconsin, and it was with the husband killing the wife, and then he stepped in front of a uh, truck or something to kill himself, and they left behind their children. With Now there's a GoFundMe uh, for their three children, I believe it is. Um, and she was a physician's assistant, I believe. And let me just see about this. This is a crazy case. Uh, let's see. He walked in front of a semi truck to take his own life after he killed his wife. Oh my God. Yeah, this is crazy. Um, oh my God. Says uh, Chief Sean Barnes with the Madison Police Department said officers were called to a home where they found that a victim had been violently and physically attacked. The attack had ended with the woman dead, but that was far from the end of the case. On Monday, Barnes laid out a wild and tragic series of events that ended with another death. The events began at around 3.15 p.m. on Sunday when police received a call reporting that someone was dead in a home. Police said the caller wasn't on the scene. The responding officers found the woman in her 40s dead inside the house. As police tried to find the woman's husband, another call came in just before 3.30 reporting that a man had left his car and gotten hit by another car. Police say the man was able to get back into his own car and drive off. The third and final call came just before 3.50 p.m., and this time the caller reported that the same man had gotten out of his vehicle and ran into traffic where he was hit and killed by a tractor trailer. Barnes had said the man was identified as the husband of the deceased woman, and he also said that officers had not been called to the home before. Police still view what's happening inside the home as something that should be addressed. Domestic violence continues to be an issue that plagues our community, even though it remains sometimes hidden, said the director of policy planning and evacuation. And then that was before they released their identities. And then they released the identities. Um, let's see here. Okay, here, yeah, Jason and Jessica Ray, W-R-A-Y, and here's their picture.
and they're a physician assistant couple. So I guess they were both physician's assistants. Jason and Jessica Ray, W-R-A-Y, both 45 of Madison, Wisconsin. And let's see. Jessica died of blunt force trauma and multiple stab wounds while Jason died from injuries sustained after being hit by a semi-truck. The University of Wisconsin Health confirms that Jessica and Jason both worked as physician's assistants at their medical facility. We are devastated by the news of this unspeakable tragedy and our hearts are with the family and friends suffering the terrible loss, said UW Health Press Secretary Emily Kumlu in a statement to the media. The well-being of our staff and providers is a top priority and we will continue to provide, to provide emotional support to them as they grieve. We urge the community to respect the privacy of all those who are grieving and to show support through the fund that's established for the family if you're able to. The couple had three children. It's unclear if the children were home at the time of the attack. In the meantime, a GoFundMe campaign has been arranged to help defray funeral costs and support the children, and it's currently active. And if you or someone you know is experiencing domestic violence, call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233 or go to thehotline.org. Calls are toll-free and confidential and available 24-7 in more than 170 languages. It's terrible. Okay. But, uh, it's crazy. Then, then there was, uh, I don't know if you heard about this, uh, Nicole, Children's Hospital in Massachusetts. Um, what part of Mass? Was it in? Uh, it was Boston's Children's Hospital. It's, oh, wow. It says that a Massachusetts woman was arrested this week and charged with making false bomb threats against Boston Children's Hospital last month. One of well over a dozen such threats against the Boston Hospital resulting from the relentless spread of misinformation about trans health care. Catherine Levy was charged with making a false bomb threat by telephone in federal court and faces up to five years in prison. At a press conference on Thursday, the U.S. Attorney for Massachusetts, Rachel Rollins, said that a caller to the hospital on August 30th said, there is a bomb on the way to the hospital. You better evacuate everybody, you sickos. But Levy's arrest is a drop in the bucket of far-right harassment that has plagued several children's hospitals for months. Led by anti-trans activists with millions of social media followers, Boston Children's received another threat last Friday. Some of the same activists who have promoted misinformation about the hospital have begun questioning whether the bomb threat was real. Chaya Raychek of Libs of TikTok tweeted out that one Boston police statement said, without further explanation, that many... Questions remain in questioning whether journalists would investigate. Thursday's announcement follows on the heels of a guilty plea by a California man who threatened Miriam Webster to shoot up and bomb your offices for lying and creating fake definitions in order to pander to the tranny mafia. The dictionary published cl publisher closed its Springfield, Massachusetts office in wake of the threat, which followed the dictionary's changes to include gender inclusive definitions of some words. <coughs> Jeremy David Hansen sent his messages through the Contact Us feature of the website at the time of Hansen's arrest in April. It's absolutely sickening that the Merriam-Webster now tells blatant lies and promotes anti-science propaganda. There is no such thing as gender identity. The imbecile who wrote this entry should be hunted down and shot, he wrote. He, charged, he called the, the changes part of the left's efforts to corrupt and degrade the English language and deny reality. Your headquarters should be shot up and bombed. You evil Marxists should be killed. It would be poetic justice to have someone storm your offices and shoot up the place, leaving none of you commies alive, he wrote. Okay. That's crazy. And then this poor EMT was killed responding to a call. She got crushed uh, between two ambulances. 
A Pennsylvania EMS worker was killed last week when she was crushed between two ambulances. Two private ambulances were responding to a call in Philadelphia on Saturday, and the first ambulance driver stayed behind the wheel as his colleague prepared to load the patient. At some point, the driver left the vehicle and the motor was still running, and he hopped back in upon realizing that the ambulance was inching backwards. Police say the driver accidentally pressed the gas, causing the ambulance to pin EMT Nisha Renee Dash, 32 years old, between the two ambulances, and she died at the hospital nearly an hour later. Police are investigating the incident. Wow, that's sad. And then they have... Um, Texas anesthesiologist accused of tampering with IV bags causing cardiac emergencies, including one death. Texas anesthesiologist was arrested on Wednesday. He's charged with tampering with a consumer product causing death and intentional drug adulteration. Reynaldo Rivera Ortiz Jr., 59, allegedly injected nerve blocking agents and other drugs into IV bags at a local surgery center between May 26th and August 24th that caused multiple cardiac emergencies, including one death, said the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Texas. The death was a fellow anesthesiologist at the clinic, 55-year-old Melanie Casper, who died on June 21st after experiencing a medical emergency and treating herself with an IV saline bag she'd taken home from the surgery center. And that's this woman. I've got to show her picture. According to the U.S. Attorney's Office, an autopsy found that she died from a lethal dose of bupivacaine, a nerve-blocking agent used during administration of anesthesia. It is not often abused. On August 24th, an 18-year-old patient at the center had a cardiac emergency during a routine surgery. He was rushed to an intensive care unit and survived and analysis of the IV bag used during his surgery found the, the presence of that bupivacaine, epinephrine, and lidocaine. Personnel at this center became suspicious. They identified 10 other cardiac emergencies that took place during otherwise unremarkable surgeries between May and August. Most of the incidents took place during lengthy surgeries during which extra IV bags were retrieved from a bag warmer during the surgery. Personnel stabilized each of the patients with emergency measures. According to the complaint, none of the incidents took place during Ortiz's surgeries, and they began two days after he was notified of a disciplinary inquiry into the incident during which he allegedly deviated from the standard of care during an anesthesia procedure when a patient experienced a medical emergency. All 12 incidents occurred around the same time Ortiz was working at the center and none took place while he was on vacation. He has a history of disciplinary actions, the complaint says, and he complained to other doctors that his, the center was trying to crucify him. But the complaint offers further evidence against Ortiz, including a nurse who refused to use a bag obtained from a bag warmer during one of his surgeries. Additionally, the complaint says that surveillance video shows Ortiz putting IV bags into the warmer shortly before surgeries during which a medical emergency took place. He faces a maximum penalty of life in prison, and he is, in, he is expected to make his uh, initial court appearance on Friday. And then I think if the woman that, hold on one second, did, um, I just want to see something. Who said, Debbie, yes, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it very much. Okay, let me go to the, because I just saw this woman, the one that died from this. Yes, Dr. Melanie Kaspar. So. This is, uh, see, that's the doctor that uh, died from that because she took an IV bag home. Um, She's, uh, let's see, 
tiny holes were discovered in the IV bags. Now, if there were tiny holes, what do you think that liquid would be what? seeping out? Yeah, which also contained bupivacaine, a drug used to treat localized pain. According to the reports, the tainted IV bags contributed to cardiac arrest in several patients. And Dr. Melanie Kaspar took an IV bag home to rehydrate during an illness, but the bag had allegedly been tampered with. And Kaspar later fell ill, had a heart attack, and died. Medical examiners determined that her death was caused by accidental bupivacaine toxicity. It's wow. crazy. So that's that same doctor. Yeah, that's she. She died because he tainted the bags, and she just happened to be unlucky and pick one up. Wow. And then there was uh, one other thing. Uh, I wanted to touch on here. Um, this is a strange story. Let me see here. There's a woman that was arrested, Erin Christine, Christensen, excuse me, 38 years old. She was accused of bringing a pet raccoon into a bar in uh, Maddock, North Dakota. Benson County authorities arrested a Maddock woman after they say she brought a raccoon into the Maddock City Bar. 38-year-old Erin Christensen brought a raccoon into the bar on Tuesday, September 6th. In response, the state health department set out, sent out statewide rabies warnings for anyone that may have come into contact with the animal. The sheriff's office reported that Christian Sim was arrested on Wednesday on charges of tampering with evidence, providing false information to law enforcement and the North Dakota game and fish violations. Deputies say the raccoon was put down and transported to be tested for rabies and other diseases. Christian Sin said that her family found the raccoon three months ago and they have been caring for it ever since. She said her family is torn about torn apart by the loss. Well, what the heck was she bringing it into a bar for? That story doesn't even make sense to me. No. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see if we can get any more information on this thing. What are you bringing a raccoon into a bar? She was arrested for lying to officers. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Yeah, she's accused of giving false information to law enforcement. She was released from jail after posting bail. The raccoon was seized from the home and put down. There were about 10 people in the bar when she brought it in on September 6th. Oh my gosh, but why did she do? Oh, I mean, why was she bringing it into the bar? <laughs> even get this let's see here no that's about all it's saying oh she was uh keeping it as a pet but why'd she bring it into the bar i don't know that's just bizarre a raccoon okay and then there's woman I thought she was a YouTube creator when I saw her face in this thing let's see who this is this is um, what's her name? <laughs> Debbie S says it's a good thing that it doesn't make any sense <laughs> oh okay oh god <laughs> So, there's all sorts of nut jobs out there. Yeah, I know. This is, uh, let's see, this woman right here. Okay, so she has a tiny little picture of you now. I gotta make you bigger. Okay, and. After multiple delays, a Bismarck, North Dakota woman accused of conspiring to murder her husband is going to face a jury. 
Prosecutors say events in late 2019 and early January 2020 left one man dead and a Bismarck home ablaze where the results of a love triangle gone wrong, a botched cover-up, and a plot to cash in on a renter's insurance policy. Police were caused, called to the scene on Friday, on January 2nd, 2020. There they say they found 42-year-old Chad Ensel dead with at least two gunshot wounds to the head and two separate burning fires in the home. Police arrested 43-year-old Earl Howard and the victim's wife, 40-year-old 40, 40 Nikki Sue Ensel. Howard pled guilty to conspiring to commit murder and arson facing the, fam the victim's family for the first time this past February. You stole something so precious to us, said Chad Ensel's sister, Lori Kraus, at Howard's February 14th sentencing hearing. Howard's attorney said the plea agreement strengthens the state's case against Nikki, Nikki Sue. Nikki Sue, who's, according to the affidavit, told police that Howard stepped in when her husband was aggressive to her and maintains her innocence. Nikki Sue Ensel's trial has been delayed five times. Most recently, it was delayed in February when her then attorney withdrew from the case. At a pretrial hearing on Monday, South Central District Judge Douglas Barr noted that any plea agreement should be submitted at least 10 days prior to keep to trial to keep the case on track. As you know, this is top priority, said the judge. If convicted of conspiring to kill her husband, Nikki Sue could face life in prison without the possibility of parole. Attorneys will begin selecting a jury of 12 people and four alternates on September 26th. I wonder if that was the one I said we have to watch. Yeah, definitely want to follow that. Okay, so that is so that August, uh, September 26th is coming up. And let's see what else we have. There is something else. So we did that, we did that, we did the raccoon. Um, okay, and then it looks like, what is this? No, what is this? No, we're doing stuff that's not right, that's not current. Um, Oh yeah, this, the Colorado woman that's missing. So we have uh, Colorado police are searching for a Colorado Springs woman who disappeared earlier this week and failed to contact friends and family. According to the Colorado Springs Police Department, Leonore Enrique Enriquez, 59, was last seen on September 11th at around 8 p.m. near Sinton Road and Fillmore Street. The media reports that family members haven't heard from her or seen her. The police department said it's unlike um, Leonore to have no contact with family. She's considered missing and endangered. Anyone with information on her whereabouts should contact the Colorado Springs Police Department at 719-444-7000. I should have found a whole animal. Wow, that's sad. And then we've got these two that were escaping last May. Corrections officer Vicki White had phone sex with murder suspect before escape. Alabama authorities are reportedly reviewing a thousand calls made between corrections officer Vicki White and the jailed capital murder suspect before she allegedly helped the inmate escape in April. Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton said that Vicki White, 57, and accused murderer Casey White, 38, who was housed at the William Donaldson Correctional Facility in Jackson County, called one another 949 times between August 2021 and February 22nd of 2022. Detectives have not, deter have not confirmed whether Vicki talked on the phone with Casey while on duty, but Singleton said he would be shocked if that was not the case. We're in the process of listening to those calls to see if there is any information there that might help us. 
The only thing I know for a fact is that they've had some phone sex. Vicki and Casey fled the jail on April 19th. They rented a hotel room in Evansville for 14 days. Police officers tracked them down on May 9th following an 11-day manhunt after being spotted at an Evansville car wash. A car chase ensued, which ended with Casey wrecking a stolen vehicle and Vicki, a passenger, fatally shooting herself in the head. The time of the incident, Casey was serving a 75-year sentence for trying to kill his ex-girlfriend and kidnapping his two roommates in 2015. In 2020, he was indicted on capital murder charges for the stabbing death of a woman he was believed to have been paid to kill. His trial is scheduled to begin in December. Casey first planned to escape from jail in 2020, but he is not believed to have established a relationship with Vicky until 2021. Singleton did not disclose whether they discussed Casey breaking out in any of the 949 phone calls. Casey was charged with Vicky's murder in July. He remains housed at the William Donaldson Correctional Facility as he waits to stand trial for the 2015 slaying. His lawyers are seeking to have him transferred to the Coleman County Jail. That's interesting, yeah. And, and, and there's more than her. I know the woman did that as well, didn't she? Oh, yeah, the one in um, up in Took upstate New York. Him. Yeah, upstate Left New York. Left her husband and everything. And yeah. did he end up killing her? Uh, no, she's in. She she was arrested, and uh, they they made a, um, a documentary out of it, uh, which was uh, Escape from Danamora. Yeah. But wasn't there one woman? Um, she fell in love with a prisoner. Yeah, and didn't yeah. Her. Oh, there's a few of he them. Remember her. the other one, the nurse that fell in love with the guy, and and she killed her husband, and she lit him on fire, and she got the McDonald's oh for her son and told him to take the Nintendo and they they left the house. Remember that one? She killed him with antifreeze or something? See, there's, there was more. This, I, yeah, there's, there's been more than that. Yeah, there's, there's many, I mean. no uh, jobs, aren't they? Seriously. Yeah, it's, it is crazy. And this is uh, Sherry Papini. This is the, the mother who staged her own kidnapping. And federal prosecutors are saying that Sherry Papini should spend time in jail for her elaborate hoax. On Wednesday, prosecutors suggested that Papini should serve a sentence consisting of a month behind bars followed by seven months under house arrest. The sentence suggestion was provided in an amended memorandum filed with the United States District Court for Eastern District of California. Papini previously pled guilty, took a plea deal for orchestrating the hoax and for mail fraud. In April, Papini's attorney, William Portanova, in indicated that he would work out a deal with federal prosecutors she was initially facing 20 years in prison for 34 counts of mail fraud alone and another five years for lying to the FBI about the kidnapping. Prosecutors said that the suggested sentence for, um, for Papini fully and fairly accounts for the totality of Papini's conduct and the relevant sentencing factors and is sufficient but not greater than necessary to satisfy the sentencing purposes. A lesser sentence, such as the one month of imprisonment recommended by probation or home detention in lieu of incarceration, is not sufficient to achieve the purposes of sentencing. Papini was reported missing on November 2nd of 2016, and she was found 22 days later off of Interstate 5 near Yolo, California. She was emaciated, had cuts and bruises all over her body. She had a brand on one shoulder, and her hair was cut shorter. She told investigators that she had been kidnapped at gunpoint by a pair of Hispanic women who provided description and provided descriptions to a sketch artist. She also provided detailed descriptions of her treatment by the two women. But federal authorities say she was actually staying with a former boyfriend in Costa Mesa, some 600 miles from her Shasta County home, and all of the stories were lies. When a young mother went missing in broad daylight, a community was filled with fear and concern, said U.S. Attorney Philip Talbert. Ultimately, the investigation revealed that there was no kidnapping and that time and resources that could have been used to investigate an actual crime and protect the community and provide resources to victims were wasted. Papini harmed herself to support her false statements, said the U.S. Attorney's Office. She was also reimbursed $30,000 by Victim Compensation Board to cover therapy appointments, ambulance rides, and other items 
A complaint said that Papini's ex-boyfriend provided information about her stay with him, telling investigators that they communicated with one another with prepaid cell phones for nearly one year before the alleged abduction. Wow, oh, okay. So, well, one month is like nothing there. And then let's, this is a crazy, well, there's a lot going on. So a camper was found dead in a booby trap tent filled with explosives in Washington. And they're investigating the death of the man who was found on Monday in a tent full of improvised explosive devices. A driver called 911 and, cla and claimed that they were flagged down by a woman who said her boyfriend was unresponsive in a tent near Chalachi Prairie off of U.S. Forest Service Forest Road 54. The woman led Clark County Police to a campsite and told them that her boyfriend may have set up trip wires and traps a day prior. A robot checked the tent and confirmed a man was dead inside. Bomb technicians spent several hours removing suspicious devices from inside and outside the tent. Deputies and the medical examiner then removed the body from the tent. Police have not released the deceased man's name and it's unclear how he died. Oh, scary. And then let's see, talking about crowns and everything, Harvey Weinstein is pretty upset about his dental care. So on Wednesday, lawyers for the jailed film producer Harvey Weinstein asked a California judge to allow him to see a private dentist for fake teeth before he stands trial in October on S crimes. Prison dentists will pull Weinstein's decayed molars without replacing them, Weinstein's attorney Mark Worksman said. Dentists at Twin Towers Correctional Facility told Harvey Weinstein, who's 70 years old, he can either have the teeth pulled in prison or let them continue to rot. Weinstein, who is currently serving a 23-year sentence for S crimes, including R, says he wants his teeth thick so he will look presentable for his upcoming trial in California. He also stated that his teeth are causing pain and then making it hard for him to eat. The situation is an emergency, he told Los Angeles Supreme Court Judge Lisa Lynch. I will pay for the dentist. It will be one trip and one trip only. Wednesday's hearing was mainly about two witnesses in Italy who sought to testify via video. However, Lynch asked Worksman to draft a formal request regarding Weinstein's dental dilemma. Last month, the New York court agreed to hear Weinstein's appeal of his March 2020 conviction. The jailed producer has argued that he received an unfair trial, which entailed jurors hearing about misconduct allegations that did not pertain to the criminal charges he was facing at the time. Okay, so how will he get that in one visit? How are they going to fix that other than just pull that in one visit? I don't even get that. Okay, and then we have this. Um, so an Ohio woman's behind bars after police found her infant son's decomposing body inside a Columbus home. On Monday, officers were dispatched to a home off of Jefferson Avenue, after someone called for help about an unresponsive infant. According to the court records, four-month-old Aaron Thorpe was found inside the residence and pronounced deceased at the scene. Documents indicate that the baby's body was in a state of decomposition. The child's mother, Melissa Thorpe, 38, was arrested and charged with murder. Due to the child's decomposition, his body was sent to the Nationwide Children's Hospital for additional x-rays. His body was then sent to the Franklin County Coroner's Office on September 13th, where a coroner ruled his death a homicide caused by blunt force trauma. According to the Columbus Dispatch, the coroner indicated the boy's skull had been crushed through blunt force trauma or by being crushed between two objects. Thorpe's public defender told the court that Thorpe had recently completed a recovery program and the incident occurred while she was living at a sober living residence. The lawyer added that the mother has also been seeing numerous psychiatrists and doctors and had delivered the baby on her own, thinking it was a kidney. A judge ordered her to remain behind bars on a $75,000 bond. She delivered the baby thinking it was a kidney. Okay. 
something else. Oh my goodness. Carolyn, I think I think Casey is in Zoom. Oh, is she? I think so. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, she's in here. I oh. said hi to her in chat. Okay. Hey, Zoom Casey. chat. Where, where are she? Hi, Casey. I don't see her. Oh, there I see her. Hi, Casey. Hey, Casey. Casey, can you hear us? Let me ask you to unmute, maybe. She might be shy. No, she. I don't think. Let me ask her to unmute. Hi, Casey. Okay. Casey, can you hear us? Is she answering in chat? No. No. She might be shy. She might have fallen asleep. Oh, she has a slept to wake, you know. She may be checking on Noah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I just thought I'd let you know, Carolyn, just in case. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wait until I mean, up. Well, look, there's a Kentucky college student who was arrested for allegedly making bomb threats on social media. Hmm. Everybody's with the uh... Casey. I just jump in anytime you're here, so you let us know, okay? Western Kentucky University student is facing a Class C felony after police say that she posted a bomb threat on social media. Haley Reed, 20, was arrested at the school, charged with first-degree terroristic threatening. She was taken into custody Wednesday by the campus police. They found suspicious material near Cherry Hill and the faculty house after school police sent out an alert regarding a potential explosive device. The material reportedly turned out to be construction-related items. When police um, investigated the material, they learned that the threat had been posted on social media platform Yik Yak. Is that a new platform? Which referenced a reported bomb planted near parking structure two at the school. Investigators determined that Reed made the post and Reed reportedly said she was joking and there was no actual bomb threat. Okay, unfortunately a student made that post on the Yik Yak social media site. Has anybody heard of Yik Yak? The student posted it to be a joke. These things are taken very seriously so we investigate those threats to the fullest and they were taken into custody. She could face 10 years in prison if convicted. So not a good joke to do. Okay, yik yak. Okay, I think that's the end of our true crime stuff. Anyway, Casey, are you there? Oh, oh my gosh. She just super Yeah, I just saw that. Oh wow, Casey. She's so that's, sweet. Oh my goodness. That is uh, incredible. You're really incredible. So lovely of her. Um, are you, if you can unmute, you can talk to us. I'm going to ask you to unmute, but thank you so much. That's incredible. That's so it is. incredible. Thank you. I am going to ask you to unmute. And if you just unmute, then you can talk to us. Oh, don't be sorry. There's nothing to she be might be shy, about. Carmen. It, it's very hard to, you know. Yeah. Do you want to talk? I mean, is, do you just try? Um, you don't have to be on camera. You just unmute and talk and just say hi. We're all here for you, Casey. Yeah. Yeah. You're not alone, Pat. Do you see where you can unmute? Yeah, she's right next to me, Nicole. She's up here. It is confusing, though, Carolyn, if you've never come into... Yeah. Yeah, she's saying she can't figure it out. Um, Casey, if you oh. click on that, there's like, a, there's like a microphone beside you. And if you if you click on that, um, your face won't show. It'll be just your voice. Yeah, do you see the little microphone somewhere? And if there has a, there's a, line, has a line through it. it. So if you just click it, it'll unmute it. You have to click the center of the screen to get that bar to pop up. So it's not going to yeah. pop up if you click right in the center. 
Yeah, I forgot about that, Nicole. Yeah, or if you're on a PC, you need to scroll your mouse down so that those those bars will show. Are you on a phone or are you on a laptop or a tablet? What do you what are you on? Oh, it's so cold here. Oh, you're on a phone. Okay, so is it an iPhone or an Android? You have an iPhone, Nicole? Yeah, oh, Nicole is our phone Android. expert. Android. Well, well, Android. You just It's the same thing for iPhone and Android. Just click the center of the screen no matter where you are, and a menu is going to pop up at the bottom that says mute um, with a picture of a microphone. There's going to be a red line through it. Um, you want to click it so there's no more red line through it. So if you click this, center. it should be on the very far left. It is on my iPhone. I don't know about Android, but it's right at the bottom when you touch the screen. Yeah, try touching the screen and seeing if the menu shows up on the bottom. The microphone and it should have a video camera and it should say um, chat, maybe participants. Yeah. Uh, it says unmute, um, start video, share content, participants more. Can, can you unmute her, Karen? Yeah, see, with I'm her trying permission, to obviously. do it. It says, let me see. Ask Are you to able to? Unmute. But ask, with our permission, of course. You can ask to unmute. Casey, do you remember what you did to mute your microphone? Because you weren't muted at first. See, I think when I ask her to show mute, it should come across your screen that it says like the host has asked you to unmute or something, and then you can just click that. Do you see that coming? Yeah. Why well, don't she say that's not an issue? Yeah. yeah she might be just shy. She might happen. want to. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you don't want to talk, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. That's, that's fine. understandable. Yeah. Um, but if you feel like it, you can just do that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, wow, what a crazy. And sometimes it's nice yeah. to be just up here and talking yeah. amongst each other with her up here just to listen, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, It's right. kind of Yep. And, uh. God, I need to put on a dressing gown. I'm frozen. It got so cold here, I had to bring some plants oh, in, but it's not, I, I didn't bring everything in because it's not supposed to stay this cold. But Have I you think... seen the price of the oil? What we'd be paying for heating this year? Oh, I don't even want to look. Oh my mm. God! Everything's going up this year. They said all the travel around Thanksgiving and Christmas is going to be like twice what it normally is. Airline. Fees. You're joking. No, I've heard it all. Wow. They, everything. We is... need to start buying now just to go for heat, the sales. The heating oil, um, all of the electrical service, everything is just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. All the food is going. I mean, it's just it's nuts. It is. It's it's nuts, and and nobody's wages are going up. Like, we definitely will pray for your son Noah. Oh, we will. Yes, yeah. absolutely, Casey. Definitely. But it's too early to get this cold. But it's not supposed to be. Um, after tomorrow. Thank you so much, Casey, and uh, prayers to your son. Would you consider you the good summer, Carla, weather-wise, compared yeah, to other Yeah, I mean, years? we didn't have uh, we didn't have much rain at all in the summer. I mean, it wasn't that hot. I would like it maybe a little hotter, but yeah, we were told the smallest turkey will be sixty dollars. Sixty dollars for a turkey. Oh my God. I wonder oh, if crazy. over here you can get them free, you know, at ShopRite or I think a lot of supermarkets do it depending on what you spend. What, do you collect points or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Then they probably shove up the prices on everything else. <laughs> yeah. You know? I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know. 30. You... It's probably what we pay around here for a turkey. 30 euro, which is around 30 dollars. 60, my god. So, how much would a ham cost you then? Like a big ham? Well, 
It all depends. Um, I don't oh, know. Oh, wow. You just paid eleven ninety nine for bacon? Wow. Oh, no, wait. Is that a joint of bacon or is that rashers? How, that how like... much bacon is that, Debbie? So is, is that, that the bacon pound? that you fry, Debbie? Yeah, the, the strips. Eleven ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Good God. Was that a 16-ounce package? What was that? Pound, two pounds? Yeah, it's nuts. Oh, that's insanity. God, I got three euros for six slices. Six rashers mm. here. Our gas has gone down to 3.28 here. Yeah, the gas was down in New Jersey when we were there last last week. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, um, we got it for three something. We paid cash at the one gas station and it was three something. We were overjoyed. Yeah. Mm. That was like. Well, that's uh, a good sign. That's a good sign. So your heating oil will have come down as well. I hope so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Milk costs more than than it has. I think she meant gas. Yeah. She's saying She milk. said it was a pound. The Oscar Mayer. She said a pound. Oh, 1199. Yeah. How much would how much would like three liters of milk cost you over there? Oh god, you buy in gallons, don't you? Yeah, we buy yeah. in gallons. So well there's like three point seven liters in a gallon. So how much is a gallon of milk? Like four something usually like four something. Yeah. It's around eight dollars here. Really? Come off, Claire. Oh eight dollars. Yeah. That's insane. Wow. Yeah. Mm. You should get a bottle of whiskey for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What I need here. Oh, don't yeah. feel bad, Casey. Don't feel bad, Casey. Ah, oh, don't. Mm -mm. Yeah, three but, liters of milk here are like two two eighty. That's so like that's four eighty nine. Just... It could be it depending on where you get it. Mm. Okay, Casey, I want to ask up. you a question. You can answer in chat if you don't want to answer in here. It's fine. But did they have him straightened out on the medication he's taking with his seizures before he left the hospital? A gallon of milk at Shopred is four fifty nine. Oh, that's not bad. That would be, you know. I wouldn't consider that expensive now, but I I do no. the bacon. The bacon is ridiculous. Twelve dollars for a pound of rashers. Debbie, yeah, he said she said no. He he yeah. wasn't straight now. Yeah. I see that. I'm surprised that they let him go home. So I am I. Too. They were wanting to get people in and out, in and out, quick, quick, quick. Yeah, but you, you, yeah, you know, but if it goes with, wrong, they'd have a massive lawsuit. Right, yeah. Oh, you with know, something like usually, this, they would. Massive. No, they said, well, they should have at least kept him and tried different medications to find something that would work before they Absolutely. send him home. Um, they should even though they. Him. Yeah, even though they don't know what's causing it, they at least need to get that under control. Um, so that's what's making me question, would you consider seeing, taking him and get another opinion from a different doctor, a yeah. neurologist? I don't think they should have let him out until they had got a diagnosis. Well, Sometimes it is hard to find out why, but at least they should have kept him that they found the right combinations of medications to have at least gotten them under control. Yeah, to control it, I agree. I agree with you too about a second opinion. Mm -hmm. What's that old saying, doctors differ, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have a university teaching hospital relatively near you, 
um, that's always my first recommendation. That's where uh, we had our son treated the entire time that he had leukemia. Yeah. Kepron, I wonder what that Hi, is. Hi, Julianne. Hi, Julianne. Yeah, I understand they've given him something, but it's not controlling his seizures. Yeah, that's what's worrying, like. And Right, and um, there's other medications besides that, and they can even do combinations of medicines to at least get them under control. Yeah, I'd be ringing them in the morning now and I'd be telling them, listen, he's still having seizures. Um, what's up and what will I do, you know? Hi, Scooter. Questions about what Scooter? What's Scooter talking about? Does Scooter have a advice? Do you have questions? I no. missed that. Questions about what Scooter? Do you have experience with this? I missed oh. it. I don't know. I, she this say, I only know Scooter now. <laughs> She's saying I yeah, she could. I missed it. I missed it too. Oh, her daughter probably, but her, uh, I think Scooter's probably talking about her daughter. I think her daughter oh, has, uh, um, oh, I thought um, it was epilepsy, but I don't know. But I didn't see any comments from Scooter, I was confused. You're signing him out of school? Oh, since age 11. Okay. Oh, God, Scooter, wow. I don't know what else to do. Don't, I think, I'm trying to remember where you are, because you have a really good children's hospital up there, right? If I'm thinking where you are, are you in Pennsylvania? He's 17, though. Would, they not, would he not be better off trying? Oh, well, the know... children's hospitals are very good, though. Are they? Yeah. Yes. Right. It just bothers me though that they've let yeah. him go home. And yeah, that bothers me as well. She has a very good That's children's right. hospital. I mean. Yeah. What What is their um, opinion, Casey? I mean, are they like? Can you read what the doctors are saying? Are they? I think if they, I don't know that they would have let him go if they were. You're an RN. It can right. take a while for seizure medication to reach a therapeutic level. Well, Did thank they you, check Amber. his pituitary gland? Okay. That, that can give seizures too. I don't know why. How long was he in he hospital said, for yes. this? I, I wonder how long they kept him in for. Like yeah. how long was How long was he in the hospital, Casey? Yeah. Wait, you're reading my mind. That's my, was my next question. Because <laughs> she was talking Great minds about it. Think she alike, was talking Debbie. about it the other the other night. Yes, they did. Like maybe. They checked everything. A week ago or something. They checked everything, and everything checks out okay. Hmm. You're right, Amber. That's why my next question was going to be how long he was in the hospital or how long has this been, medication been started? Yeah. Oh, wow. Airbones, my daughter had seizures since. A year old. Yeah, never knew what caused them. them and diagnosed as epilepsy. Really? Okay. incredibly scary and yeah. stressful. God love you, Airbones. 
three weeks. It may take six to 12 oh, weeks wow. in that time frame for it. He to was in hospital system. for three weeks. Yeah, but medications a lot of times takes longer than that. Are they oh, getting, right. are they getting better, Casey? Like Amber said, did they do an ECG while the seizure was happening? That's the, an awful lot to put on a mother sending a child home still suffering with that. You know, especially when it came out of nowhere. He, he just developed that. He's on Keflex. Keflex. Isn't that a muscle relaxer? Yeah, but they probably would do that because your tongue, you know, if you have a seizure, you can swallow your tongue. So they probably uh. would put him on something like that to relax his muscles you know oh he okay she's saying he is better now oh, oh he's better Thank now God. that's good okay yeah oh that's a relief god i remember when i had my first child and you know when they're in the little moses basket beside you and you think they're not breathing gee because you can't sleep a wink you know, the yeah. know when they're breathing like and you think they've stopped breathing oh my god your nerves are at you like Mm-hmm. I thought that would freak me out. It doesn't matter how old a child gets, the mother always worries. Oh, God, God, oh, yes. Keflex is an antibiotic. And my oh. son used to forget to breathe oh, when Keflex. he was Oh, Keflex. What am I that thinking of? terrifying, Sharon, isn't is it? This, what is that? Oh, Seriously. Relaxer, that sounds like that. I can't like even that. tell you. Oh, my God. It took us I seven know. and a half years to get pregnant with him, with the doctor yeah. the whole time. And then mm. you know, I'm almost losing him. You know, yeah. immediately. Yeah. He was on a monitor for apnea and oh, bradycardia like for flexerol. a year. Flexerol. Yeah. Maybe it's flexerol. Oh my gosh, Is Sharon. The, wow. Yeah. Relaxing. Hey, I, I got him through. <sighs> yeah. Good woman. Yeah. Oh, you're Eternal. welcome, Casey. Thank you. Oh, you won't. Uh, oh, Scooter Casey. said it was probably Capra. No, I think it was. What did I just say? Um, gosh, I can't remember what I just said. Hi, Sandra. That's wonderful. Flexerol? Is that a, is that a muscle relaxer, flexerol? Right. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they rule out all the scary medication. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then find the right medication. So they probably keep changing these medications. There's often no no right as Amber said. They rule out all the super scary stuff. And then to find the right seizure med, it can take trying a few different ones. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. scary. Yeah, Casey, I'm sure yeah. it was. A lot of them give them urantin. Mm -hmm. Uther yeah. says seizure of med is Kepra. It's an anticonvulsant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi, Hart. Psycho Benzil Supreme. I believe he'll be, he'll be okay, Casey. We just got to find the right medication. Yeah. They never let him out if there was any danger there. When you think yeah. about it, like. Mm hmm. My heart and my voice, yeah. Uh, that's too long a word to read, heart. <laughs> Cyclo something. <laughs> that's like benzoprene, which is flexor. Oh, woman. Flexoral. Oh, woman. That's a muscle relaxer. Yeah. It's a that's tough flexoral. Question. That's flexoral, cyclo benzoprene, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, Casey. Just hang in there, Casey. He'll be okay. Yeah, you'll get through this. You'll get through this. And your son will as well. Yeah. And they'll get his medications <clears throat> straightened out. Yes. But it's like more benzocrine is flexural. Yeah. yeah. So, but if he's it's been three weeks, that medication he's taking right now may not be long enough yet. Oh, that's good advice. She says, journal the seizures when they happen and how long. For the doctor. For the doctor. So. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for helping her, Amber. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, she's lovely. I think she said she's, did she say she was an RN? She, yes. yes. Well, now, Amber, I have a few issues. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts when I do this thing, don't do that. Uh. Yep, there, but the, for the grace of God, we go. Absolutely, mm -hmm. Julianne. Boy, yeah. 
Oh, thanks, Casey. Ah, uh, yeah, we think so too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Amber. Scary to watch you, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I would be terrified. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. And Scooter went through that as well since her child was 11. Yeah. yeah. I was also I told to turn on the, the body, body movement with each oh. Caesar, along with the timing. Does your son freak out when, when he gets them, Casey? Like, are they are they aware? Like, I don't know one thing about seizures. Are they aware that they're getting them or? They can feel the majority it. Majority like of people that have seizures can feel something. Feel, they feel different when before it starts. And then a, a lot of them, I'm not saying all, but a lot of them don't even know what's happened. And then they come out of it and it, it just makes them really, really tired. Yeah. Very wow. exhausted. They have no clue. Yeah, yeah they don't. Mm -hmm. So they don't remember any of it? No. Mm -mm. I have a friend that can have really bad, she's had epilepsy since she's been young and she could have yeah. really bad seizures. And she said she can sometimes feel when it's coming on, there's some sort of aura, but um, mm -hmm. she's had it where she hasn't, and she's fallen right through glass shower doors and yeah, um, oh my just, God. yeah, yeah, really bad. Yeah. She can't, yeah. You can get service dogs for seizures too. And they, they can right. detect them. You think at this day and age with MRI machines and all sorts of stuff that they can pinpoint that problem, wouldn't you? Well, a lot of it is, you know, like, um, Amber said, a lot of it is undiagnosed. Yeah, it, they, they need to study that more. more. Yeah, they need to study it more, put more money into it. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Scooter, that that you're that she's been going through it for that long. Yeah, that Debbie, yes, that's what Sharon just said. Oh my God, the dogs can sense it. Wow. Yeah, or found right, actually or, my friend, yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. My dogs, when my dad came to visit, he has lung cancer, and my dogs were sitting with him the whole time he was here. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, Amber. Yeah, yeah you're right about that, Amber. So dogs can detect about cancer. The brain. Yeah, the brain is a very complex organ oh, of the body. Very yeah, complex. sure. We only use a minuscule mm -hmm. part of it, don't we? I know. Barbos, my son was five, he had seizures. Found he had a tumor behind his optic nerve. Oh my god. Had surgery before his sixth birthday to remove it. He's thirty six now, thank God. He's he's grand mm -hmm. and no but no per, per I can't Peri say it. Peripheral. Peripheral. Thank you. Peripheral. Lucky. Barb. Yeah. We're thankful you're here with us up to not Amber. Yeah. 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 Nobody yeah. having a nurse in the house. Mm-hmm. A real nurse. She, know, she knows her stuff. A real nurse, and she knows her yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you learn something new every day, girls. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yep. You do, really, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're lucky. Enlightenment. Yeah. Enlightenment. We love that around here. She doesn't normally talk. No, well, we're delighted no. that you did, Amber. Glad you did. Yes. That's a lovely name too, isn't it, Amber? Mm-hmm. 
Eight o'clock in the morning here. It looks nice outside. Oh, it's eight o'clock in the morning? Wow. Hi, Liza. Hi, Liza. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi Liza. Oh, I didn't even notice you were on the panel. I saw you in the chat. Neither <laughs> did I. She gave me a fright when she answered. <laughs> Lord. Oh, my goodness. You were saying you were busy early, like, busy at work, Liza. I'm delighted yeah. for you. Busy, Your busy. stuff is beautiful. Carl had got oh um, her bracelets and oh, they're absolutely stunning. Yes. They're lovely on yeah. you, Carla. Oh, thanks. That's good. Yes. I'm glad. <laughs> I wouldn't know which one to choose. I think I go for the pink one. But the black one is gorgeous too. You know, if you were wearing black. Well, it's black and aquamarine. Do, do you make yeah. necklaces to match those? Yeah. We do. Next time we come up on auction, I was going to bring some... Um, some delicas, which are just little round beads that are on necklaces. So the same sort of beads that are in Carolyn's um, aquamarine, but they just, it's just one in a necklace. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, time. a full string of them would be pricey, would it? If, if, if you had like a two strand necklace, as I, I love two strand necklaces. Oh dear. Yeah, so aquamarine. You, a two strand of that, of, of the, of the, oh, uh, of the what, would the, what would it cost roughly? Oh, of aquamarine for, oh, oh, it'd be of like. Of the black ones, the, the, of the, you know the bracelet? Oh, the, the black, black the, what is that, obsidian? Oh, the black ones, obsidian. the obsidian. Yeah. Um, the, oh, it'd be easy, like a few hundred dollars if you wanted two strands right around your neck. Be gorgeous though. Yeah, easy. Even more. I'm not sure. That's Anna's um Anna's department. Well, uh, I do I do have five sons, like you know. <laughs> That's it. I can all put in a fifty eight. And Christmas is coming up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Come on, boys. You got five boys. Oh god. Well, they're men. They're all grown. Well, they're men. Yeah, but yeah. geez. Well, they're still boys in my mind. You're glutton for punishment. There, five of them. Ah, uh, sure. We had no <laughs> telly in those days, you know. <laughs> yeah. And oh to keep goodness. ourselves occupied. Carol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I have four and they're all boys, but five. I have a daughter, too, of six. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. That's that's yeah. great. I had a few <laughs> miscarriages as well, so I could have, you know, I could have had a... Could have been a bigger a family, more. yeah. Yeah. When did your daughter come? Was she the last or was she... No, she was third. Third. Okay. Yeah, she's thirty. She's thirty-seven. Oh no. Mhm. Mm Do they all live near you, or or one of your children are in Canada, aren't they? Yeah, my youngest is in Canada. Oh my yeah. gosh, Casey. Casey. My Casey. Oh my goodness. So Thank you so Barb much. Said. That's incredible. And uh, he had to have so a growth grateful. hormone shots until he turned eighteen. Otherwise, he would not wow. have grown. That's Surgery really incredible. Surgery was eight Casey. hours long. Thank you so much. Surgeon. Wow. Who's that, Nicole? Barb. Hmm? Barb Olson. My phone is so messed up, guys. I am oh, so sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, It says that he had to have growth hormone shots. Barb Olson said that until he turned 18. Otherwise, he would have not grown. Surgery was eight hours long with three teams of surgeons. Very stressful oh, time wow. in her life. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, good she, night, Casey. Good night, love. Good night, Casey. 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 Thank you so much. I hope you get some good oh, breakfast. Oh, she jumped off the panel. Sleep. Oh, did she say she was yeah. getting what? Leaving? Yeah, she said no. Yeah, she oh. said it in chat. Oh, I didn't here. see it. Okay. Good night, Casey, and thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it, and we'll be praying for your son, Noah Charles. Yes. Absolutely, Casey. Good night, Casey. Pray to God now that seriously that Amber find says, the right good night. Hang in there. Just log yeah. everything in for your doctor. Prayers for your son, Casey Jones. Yeah. 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 Hmm.
Yeah, Liza, uh, four of them live beside me. Yeah. Not recommended every five minutes. <laughs> mom, 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 mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! The one in Canada. Whereabouts in Canada are they, um, is your youngest? He's in Toronto. Oh nice. Yeah, he was supposed to go. God, uh, twenty twenty, but yeah. COVID hit. I need his yeah. ticket bought, paid for the lot, and uh, COVID hit. Oh, he lost his money on the flight. Found your lamps just mm -hmm. shut off, letting so me know I'm gonna be asleep. Okay. Night, Earthbound. Good night. Good night. Good night, Earthbound. Sleep well. Good night. Yeah. So yeah, he's been there since last December. He loves it over there. Yeah. He was actually his, his um his best friend. The two of them went over. Oh no. Nice. Well, my son went first. Yeah. Did he his just friend go over on like? Did he but they got work straight work? away. Like they they. Sorry. Did he go for work or he just wanted? Oh, to for, go work, for work, for yeah. work, and the experience of it, like. Yeah. And he yeah. got a job straight away. Oh, good on you. you. Know. But um, they, they, they accommodate, like, apartments are very expensive. That's the only, the cost of living is very high. Mm, yeah. But other than that, like, it's good, it's good for him, you know. Mm. So he got a, he's, he's got a two-year visa, but I don't know whether he's going to stay there. He doesn't know himself. He, he wants to go to Japan as well. Oh, good on you. So leave him at him. He's ambitious, you know. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you must have done something, right? Oh, God. He, and he says that all the time to me. Only for you, Mom, I wouldn't have done this and all this. Oh. I said, don't be daft. You do all this yourself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but I have been lecturing him all through his... You know, There's nothing for Ireland, you know, look abroad and whatever. Yeah. I wanted him to expand his wings and see the world and, you know? Why not? Yeah. And live yeah. life. The world is just so full of negativity at the moment. And, uh, oh, no. Yeah. You know, they, 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 I, I remember being his age and you're full, even though I was married with kids, you still have um, a sense of excitement about the future and all that, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just kids, all they're listening to is negative news, morning, noon and night for the last, I don't know how many years. I'd say yeah. since 2008, you know? Yeah. And um, you, f I feel so bad for them, you know? Yeah. Mm. I, I do have something you, positive. Own, you know, you should be enjoy be able to enjoy your life and be enjoy, young. Yeah, absolutely. Instead yeah. of worrying about COVID and worrying about recessions and worrying about yeah. everything. Debbie you know, Debbie S paid eleven ninety nine, she said, for a pound of Oscar Meyer bacon. And you could have gotten sixteen ounces of Boar's Head, which is very good brand that's not even on sale at ShopRite for ten ninety nine, but oh my god, you could have gotten one pound of the bowl and basket brand, which is ShopRite's brand for four ninety nine, and then you could have gotten, um, let's see here, the Oscar Meyer, the Jimmy Dean was uh, five ninety nine, not on sale for twelve ounces, so less than a pound, but still less than what you paid. And the Oscar Meyer, twelve ounces, is on sale for seven forty nine. And so, are you sure you got a pound and not twelve ounces? I wonder. Bacon was on sale at Meyer last week for four four fifty. For a pound package. Oh, and then you're really not going to like this. A 22 ounce Oscar Mayer bacon, $9.99, not on sale. So, oh wow, your Publix is way high. Yeah, yeah. And oh, I, could... I just checked my bacon, and 400 grams. Of course, it's not done by our 400 grams cost me three euros but wait which would be $3. but the hormel black label bacon is half price right now at uh shop right so instead of 8.99 you're paying 4.99 oh i wish i had that store because that's the pretty for nice one bacon. pound so yeah. that's the time to stock up on the black label there 4.99 it's shop right shop right we don't have it yeah that's 14 that's 14 ounces so no, I, I get fourteen ounces oh, yeah, one of bacon. Pound, but for no, this is one pound. Three euros. But this is only one pound, and then but the twenty-two ounces now. she could get of the Oscar Mayer for nine ninety-nine. Oh, there's Casey. Again. She's on the panel again. Hi. 
Um, <laughs> okay. Where is she? She's right next yes. to me. Oh, she is. Hi, Casey. Yeah. Carol, for here, a kilo of bacon is eighteen ninety nine. Oh, come off it, Liza. Oh, wow. Oh, little rush bacon, you know, with the tail and the eye. Good what? God. The tail what? and the what? eye. What? what? Like the, you know, the eye of the bacon, the round meaty part. and then the Give part. me a fries. I was thinking of a oh, pig's Oh, I'm eye. thinking it too. I'm like, your bacon has a tail and an eye? <laughs> eee, okay, that's disgusting. Very... Tail and an eye. a weird shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. See, when you eat bacon in other countries, it ends up being Canadian bacon, what we call Canadian bacon anyway. Yeah. Like ma maple flavored, Sharon? No, it looks like ham. It looks like it's a little ham. round. Yeah. All yeah. right. We don't get that here. We only you don't get bacon. it. We have short oh. rash bacon, so just the eye or the middle what's, rash. What's, what's the eye? eye? Are you talking I about a fillet it. of ham? Is no, it like round and sorry? The bacon. It's the round eye. And well, then, what does it look like? Is that just a, a round joint? Like a round piece okay. of bacon, and then it's like a, a piece of round yeah. bacon with this piece of streaky bacon on it. Like, so it's the rasher, it's the full rasher of bacon. Oh, that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wish they wouldn't have different names for everything in every country and have different weight <laughs> yeah. sizes. My brain is trying to figure out <laughs> grams and grams and kilograms and Jesus. <laughs> Seriously, it's ridiculous. I haven't eaten meat for over 35 years, that's and that's I'll really the it. only thing I ever sometimes think about missing is bacon. Yeah, the smell yeah, of a rush, yeah. you can't beat it. So, oh, especially really group habits. therapy, Julianne. Oh, Julianne needs oh. group therapy. Amp brown smells like bacon. Oh, it's so good. Why, Julianne? <laughs> what's going on? I'll be putting a fry on Do you mean you want to out. call into the Zoom? Hi, rambling recruiter. Hello, rambling. Yeah, well, that was My friend is here. I'm very happy now. You've got, night a, is fan. You've got a fan, Nicole. Soup coat. Uh, they're my good I like them a lot. I really do. Like I'm. Soup I like coat when they come. Blew me away. And I what is soup coat? Soup coat come blew her away. I don't know what soup coat is. Will you guys please hit the likes? We'd appreciate it very much. We certainly soup would. Coat. I don't know what that is. How are you, Debbie? I'm good. You can email if you want to call in Julianne. Barb says Canadian bacon doesn't have a lot of fat. Right. No. Yeah. Right. No. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't buy a oh, piece I got if there was you. no fat, you know? Because you're you're paying for the fat. Yeah. A nice lean piece of ham. I like, I don't just lean. Mm. I like, on bacon, I like a little bit of fat, a little bit of crispy at Do the you? end. Oh, I, yeah, like I like it real crispy. I don't like it, like, Oh, oh you're talking about rashers now. I get mixed up. You see, we call yeah. slices of bacon, we call them rashers here. And then when we talk about bacon, we're talking about an actual joint. You know a joint that you boil with cabbage or no, turnips? A joint. No, oh, no, I do. No, no, no. That, that, sounds, that sounds really oh. disgusting. I'm that sorry. Really, yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. what do you mean it's yeah. disgusting? It's not I a rusher. Not, it's not I a don't rusher. know. It sounds... I know what you're talking about, Carol. Oh, my God. You've soup. never heard of a joint. You know you <laughs> with a cabbage, you put a joint. <laughs> You've never heard of a joint of bacon or a no. joint of ham. No. What do you cook for Christmas dinner? What do you boil for Christmas? We don't boil we don't we boil, boil joints of bacon a turkey and a ham no, and not a ham yeah. so, oh, yeah, like so you, you roast your ham no yeah we do roast beef we do a ham big with the pineapple and the no, 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 no. we'll get back to the ham now you're saying yeah that you roast when you take a ham. ham or you have a brown sugar cured ham, and then you put the, the pineapple you could put cloves yeah. and now yeah. is is this raw when you buy it no the spiral so ham. No, already. the spiral ham. How do you hams, think it was cooked? The it's fresh cured. ham. The fresh ham would be not cooked, but the spiral ham and right. stuff like oh, that. Yeah. They're, yeah. They're, no, I, I'm talking cooked. about fresh ham, like raw ham. A fresh ham. No, no, we would boil that. We we boil that first. Oh no! Well, we don't boil the fresh ham. Yeah, but then then we put it in the oven. 
Oh, okay. If, no. that, if it's for no. Christmas, they put cloves in it and honey yeah. and all sorts okay. to well, get it all nice and crispy. But for for a dinner, um, you you buy a lovely piece of center cut of ham, which would be like would you like the fillet of it, you know? And you mm. boil you boil that with cabbage. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know what's you, wrong oh, with that. Oh, that sounds it. exciting, Julianne. You, yeah, but you boil it first on its own for about an hour, an that hour and a half. That sounds exciting. Well, and then, and then you cut up the cabbage and you put it in. So the cabbage is lovely and salty as well. Girls, it's delicious. You haven't lived, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I know Here. what you're talking about. Okay, well, oh, it sounds, Julianne's going to go, might go on a date I'm for the first gold time. I'm going to butter smothered on your spuds and your cabbage. <laughs> yeah, carry you gold butter for sure. Cabbage, but just okay. minus the boiled meat. Did you meat. see, guys, what Julianne said there in chat? She, she said might go on a date. was trying to tail it. <laughs> okay, Carol. <laughs> yeah, she might go on a date for the first time in 2019 with a, boy, with a man she's known forever. Oh, a nice person. Awesome. So Congratulations. that sounds fun. Like that already. sounds like a lot of fun. You should do it. Do it. Yeah. Go for it, girl. Go, Go for, for it. it. Go for it, Julianne. Just You'll be dead it. long enough. That's true. You Just know the person and you said they're nice. Just do it. Go for it, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Treat Go for it and let us know. Get your nails done. Get your hair done. God, I hope he's nice now. Imagine going to all that trouble. No, she and said she's known him forever and he's nice. She knows him. She's known him. Yeah, she's yeah. been forever. Oh, she's there. Forever, she's known like, him, and he's it's nice. Not a rando. Hi, hi. It's gonna be great good. after it's treating gonna yourself. Be good. Mm. Oh God, my heart just pitter pattering for you. <laughs> oh, you like oh. him? Then yeah, then go. Thank you. Yes, oh, Claire. and it's being said the concert was great. That's good. Oh, I was thinking about her today, wondering how it was. Good. She said it was great. Can I just ask one more question, Carolyn? Yeah. Corn, corn beef. Oh. Yeah. Right? Do yeah. you boil it? Or don't yes. tell me that you roast corn no, beef. No, we, we boil no, it. No, but I don't, I don't, I don't cook corn beef at all. I don't cook corn beef at all because I don't eat it. You I don't do. eat corn beef. No. It's absolutely mm, delicious. Yeah, you well, boil it with the clothes. Potatoes, carrots, and cabbage. Oh, my oh, God. But only once, we only so eat it once per year. That's it. And I barely eat it. So, yeah, but how could you how could could you not like boiled ham if you like it's just, corned beef? We're not. It's just not. I don't know. It's just we didn't grow really up with a boiled that meat person. That's insane. <laughs> it's such an easy dinner, especially when you've got kids. A big lump of ham mm -hmm. and a, a big pot of potatoes, and then cut up your cabbage about about three quarters of an hour or an hour before the meat is done, and and it's a delicious, easy dinner. Seriously, so easy. My no, kids' favorite food is I food prefer food. to bake a ham. Can I, can I tell you something funny, Carol Lucy? You, you know Conan O'Brien, right? He was Irish. Yeah. He is Irish. <laughs> well, well, his he parents was, were Irish, weren't they? He was making fun of an Irish cookbook. He's like, right? Irish cuisine. He's like, what cuisine do the Irish have? Everything is potatoes and, yeah. uh, you know, you boil some. Some type we boil them, we fry and them, he's like, we bake them. And, and it was so funny because when I was a realtor, right, I, I was showing this house and it was this little Irish woman and she had like nine children, I'm telling you, and lived in this tiny, tiny house and she had children like from their 20s right down to she was nursing one, okay? And I said, Sounds how like many me. children do you have? And she's like, I have nine or something. And uh, she had this Irish accent. And you know what she had going in the kitchen? She had three mm. different bread machines going, making bread. Wow. She had three different, uh, they didn't even have instant pots back then, but they were slow cookers. Yeah. And she was cooking potatoes something in them. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember saying, like, oh, my gosh, Conan O'Brien is right. That, that that's what she's cooking, you know, like. That's what she was cooking. It was, it was, it was all potato. I think she said, I think I'm, she was making potatoes super. And she had like three different uh, <laughs> slow cookers going with potatoes and three different well, bread makers going with bread. And we just don't live on bread and potatoes. <laughs> but we're not that backwards. <laughs> you can't have a spot without a bit of meat and a bit of and vegetables. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just laughing food. because, yeah, but I think. Yeah. Yeah, because well, they did in the olden days, like they did when we were under British rule. 
yeah. we were living on potatoes. They had all the, the yeah. Anyway, there, when I was I watching the Sesame <laughs> Street or something, there used to be a show on. I've, I talked about it all the time. I think it was Bread and Butterflies and something else. And then there was this one thing I'll never forget. I think it was this movie, or it was, I forget what the heck show it was. Maybe somebody will remember. And I guess this kid was from Ireland, and they uh, immigrated. Maybe it was to America or something, and. It was lunchtime and the kid pulls out a potato and he starts, uh, he has like a little knife and he starts peeling it and all the kids are laughing, okay, because they have a banana, they have this, they have that, and they're all laughing and it was this whole thing about how the different cultures or whatever it was, I, I don't remember what it was, it was something educational yeah, for yeah. us, but I'll never forget, he pulled out a potato and he was peeling it and eating it and then all these kids in the Ew. schoolyard were laughing and saying you know look he's got a potato a raw so, potato yeah it was a raw potato yeah a raw potato Ew. yes i've got to find out what show that was huh yeah uh, you would never see you would never see an irish child eating a raw no. potato i'm telling you it's hard no. enough to get them to eat them cooked never mind but never mind and then there was raw. the potato blight are you ever afraid of that they used to scare i used no. to read about it in the pregnancy book it used to scare the crap out of me uh, not at all. That they were saying if there was a little ago. thing in the potato it could cause a miscarriage and all kinds of stuff no, it's called no, potato no. blight and I was like, oh, my That's, God. They've all, they've all that tackled now. I think I've had a potato like that. that. And then, oh, my gosh. It was a, th it was a huge thing years ago. I mean, it, it was, was our staple but you diet. Think, like, how is a Japan potato going to cause you to have Ireland a miscarriage, you know? Yeah. It's crazy. But I, honestly, Carolyn, if I didn't have a potato, I wouldn't feel fed. I yeah, mean, yeah. you know what the way you'd have? You might have a curry or you might have pasta. Jesus, two hours later, I'd be starving again and I'd, be, I'd have to find something to eat. Whereas when you eat a dinner, you're full for the evening. You know, when you eat a, a potato, yeah. like, and it's great for kids when they come in from school, they're starved with the hunger, and you give them a good hearty dinner, and they're fed for the evening. And they might, they only need a little snack then, you know, maybe at seven or eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's 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 a very filling thing. But you give them pasta or rice, and they're they need another kind of full meal afterwards. You know, so um, I don't know. I don't know. I love them anyway. They're gorgeous. Yeah. But we yeah. have got, we have lovely potatoes here now, in fairness. Oh, we have yeah. the, the perfect climate for them. I mean, when I go down to my mother, she's beside the coast. Uh, the potatoes are like 10 times nicer than what they are up here. And I think it's the soil. Like they're so flowery and they, like they kind of burst open when, oh. when they're, um, you know, when they're boiled and they're like pure dry and just absolutely delicious. And, and the meat down there is the same. I mean, the corned beef, you could not get the same quality oh. up here. You I know? love good beef. Ginsburg. Oh, my God, I love it. It's a delicious. Nice. It's expensive now, mind you. Um, oh, I'm gonna look that's an expensive. That. I, I do that on a Sunday now. That would be a treat. But it's it's just mm -hmm. gorgeous. Corned beef and cabbage. or do you, do you call turnips turnips or suede or what do you call them? They're turnips. They, yeah. 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 Corn beef and a turnip. We don't eat many turnips here. Oh, they're we gorgeous. Brussels sprouts, I really like them. I oh, I love them too. I do too. Yeah, yeah. I only buy them yeah. at Christmas though. You only see them over here at Christmas. Seriously. Wow. Yeah, well, the month of December, they're all over the place. And then come January, there yeah. isn't a sprout, sprout to be found. You know? We've got purple, we've got purple Brussels sprouts, yeah. Pickles? Oh, really? Oh, really? Purple, purple. <laughs> oh, purple? Yeah. Purple Brussels sprouts. Oh, yeah. purple. Do, oh, they, do they taste different than the green yeah, ones? Yeah, they're a little bit, the they're like a bit sweeter. Oh. Okay. Yeah, raw turnip is gorgeous, Barb. It is lovely. Really? Yeah, and we used to, we used to eat the stalks of, you know, you know when, you're, when you're cutting cabbage, you know the stalk down the middle? That's yeah. lovely raw, and it's very good for you. Really? Yeah. We throw that away. We used to munch on them as kids. Oh, okay. As our parents wouldn't allow sweets or mm -hmm. um, sugar when yeah, we were kids. And Jesus, I made up for it after I got married. <laughs> <laughs> when I left home, my teeth were immaculate. They were snow white. God, my mother would be saying, Carl, it's an awful shame you didn't look after your teeth. <laughs> I know, ma'am, I know. I have a terrible sweet tooth. I'm hopeless. Deprivation as a child. 
But like yeah. everybody over here puts sugar in their tea when, when we were young, except my mother had six children and mm. they couldn't afford that. Could you imagine if we all were, was, were putting sugar in our tea, the amount of sugar we go through like, but um, the only sweet things we were allowed was jam. Oh, yeah. So, you know, bread and jam. So that, that, that was viewed as well, it's a fruit, you know. But, um, oh God, I'd never begrudge you for that. But, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I eat an awful lot of sweet stuff and it's, I can't help myself. You know? Carolyn? <laughs> yes. Move, your, move yourself over. You're off the screen. Oh, I'm off the YouTube. screen again. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, Can't what kind of food do, do you Americans eat then? What's your staple diet? Do you know what I mean? Like sports, Ireland, America. Our staple diet? Oh boy. Just like a lot of processed things, I think, for the most part. Americans eat just burgers and stuff like that. You know, that's seriously. That's, yeah, like, would really. you not have a dinner? Like, say, for example, I might do, like, um, say, I do steak on a Monday. Because the steak is cheap here. Like, and so I showed you the packets of steak. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. It's it's very inexpensive. It's you know, I'd have steak a couple of times a week. We I can't too much meat, a steak here. It's like eighteen dollars for like a ribeye. Oh my god! Not even very thick. I mean, that's what it costs here. Yeah. Wow. Um, everything's what? going up. Gas is going down a little bit, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you buy out? Do, do, you, do you? Would you buy out a lot of food then, Nicole? Yeah, like I go out to the grocery store once a day and we eat like we just get something for dinner that for that day. But you don't make it from scratch yourself? No. no not usually. I mean, I can, but the, the time, I don't have time oh, to I do to that. To America. I'm sick of cooking. Oh, I do. I'm sick I do. Of it. Okay, I I've got a stuff question, stuff. a really important question. I think I've talked about this before. Does anybody that was in school in the 70s remember watching on PBS, something called Inside Out. Yes. I do. Yeah, okay, I do too. And when I was home from school, if I ever found it on when I was home from school, you would freak out because you, well, I would, because you'd be like, oh my gosh, we could only watch this in school because you know, it only aired during school hours. And if it ever came on, you actually felt like you had some material that they only showed in school. I, I don't even know how to explain it to you, but they would bring in the, the television on that big, tall cart the audio visual and guys, they would yeah. know when it's coming on. And I thought, wow, they know just when it's coming on. And everybody would sit down and they'd put it on. And I'm thinking, like, how do they know? Well, it's a TV guide. OK, but uh, <laughs> they would have it perfectly <laughs> timed and you would watch this and i just looked at inside out was an anthology series of 15 minute shorts that were designed to teach children about social issues instead of resorting to happy endings as many of this kind had done inside out typically had cliffhanger endings that left the viewers to draw their own conclusions as to what they would do in similar similar situations due to the critical acclaim for the series some PBS stations would run, would double run two inside out episodes in a half an hour time slot in the evening so that parents could watch the series, which I never saw them in the evening. Uh, the series was commonly watched on classroom TV broadcasts during school hours, as well as on 60 millimeter film reels. It was a staple of daytime and structural television blocks generally programmed by local agency or agencies or school boards rather than by PBS. And it said it was the first in a series of similarly produced instructional programs made by AIT. Others that followed used similar formulas, including bread and butterflies. Do you remember that bread and butterflies? Um, no, no, you don't remember that one. Okay. <laughs> Self incorporated trade offs. Think about on the level and give and take. Uh, all of the series, including Inside Out, were produced for only one season, which I can't believe. But they wow. were frequently rerun on television and shown in schools for several years afterwards as the topics presented kept its currency. And then it said, in 1974, Bantam Books' Young Readers Pathfinder series in their Canadian branch published stories 
from Inside Out by children's writer and screenwriter Ken Sobel, who adapted several of the series to prose and included discussion questions. I never saw that either. In 1996, AIT produced an updated version of the series, Looking from the Inside Out. Never heard that. And then it said that, according to an article in, uh, in the October 28th, 1972 issue of TV Guide, WGBH Boston banned an episode about death from its airwaves in my memory, citing that the circumstances in the episode were too realistic and might scare some children. If you see what they show on oh my Yeah, I know. And it said the 1974, it won the 1974 Emmy Award for Outstanding Instructional Children's Programming. I'd love to watch that again. Yeah. Mm. And you know what? That's it. Wouldn't it be lovely if, if kids, like I know it might sound a bit old fashioned, but kids are growing up way too fast now. And what they're seeing on TV is scandalous. They're, they're learning to worry far too young now as well, aren't they? Oh, you can watch the full episodes at Indiana University Bloomington. Watch full episodes of Inside Out. Bring back Walton's Mountain, I say. <laughs> <laughs> I used to I love the world. I'm trying to see if I, I would like to watch these and see if I remember them. Because, you know, if you remember them, it could take you right back to your classroom. Because I remember where I sat yeah. in first grade. I, I can remember. Brothers and I Sisters, have... The Bully, yeah. By and By, How Do You Show, Home Sweet Home, Getting Even, Can I Help, I Dare You. Oh, they have the In My Memory one. We should watch some of these when we go to movies. I want yeah, to. Definitely. Jeff's Company. Just joking, just one place, living with love, lost is a feeling, someone special, a sense of joy, must and may I, love Susan, strong feelings, traveling shoes, when is help, yes I can, and you belong. What age group was that aimed at? Well, we were watching it in first grade, but it, yeah. Yeah. Be about I'm still six, trying five. to find that the thing we used to watch also about, and it sounds scary as hell, this guy, this guy in a van, and he would drive down the streets. Oh, and try and entice And he kids. would find the kids. No, no, but it was a series, and they'd go, oh, here he is, whatever his name was, right? And he'd stop the van and then he'd do something like, I don't know, some kind of experiment. I forget. It's driving me crazy because I can't remember what oh, I can remember. He had was... a colorful van and he used to drive down and everybody used to get so excited. And then he used to jump out and he used to talk to the kids and, and do uh, something. They run a mile now. But then I'm saying it's, it sounds I, I like terrifying now. Like whoever thought of that, that, that can you imagine in a boardroom uh. now? I'm going to get a guy in a colorful van and he's going to come down the road and then he's going to get all the kids together. That's going to be a good series, but I can't even find the name of that. And I want to find the oh uh, bread God. and butterfly episodes. Oh, that's so funny. Bread that is so <laughs> funny. When you think of today now, be, you see a van coming down the road, you'd be running for your life. Yeah. <laughs> I remember there was something that I watched on PBS and it was about Down syndrome back in the day and I don't know if it was a bread and butterflies one but it but I it was so informative um mm -hmm. let's see here bread and butterflies PBS let me see PBS They're giving me Disney it was very sad here in Ireland years ago you know if a child was born with down syndrome they were put into homes yeah, you know, and it was very rare that the parents would. It's so sad when you think back in those days. Mm. That, uh, yeah. it, it really, yeah. and the and the and the parents that raised them were unbelievable, fantastic people. Just to hell with the neighbors. This is my child, you know. Right. But the other yeah. end that felt that you know they had a kind of there was some so it was a reflection on them that there was something wrong with the child. Sure. It's just horrific when you think of it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So sad how, how they lived their lives in inst institutions like. Yeah. Well, bread and butterflies is available too. That's good. I got my work cut out. Now, what was the iPad? I could just find that one about the guy in the van. Now you're going down a rabbit hole, Carla. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> Let me see here. PBS Kitchen. Julianne, you've got to go for it, girl. And she's gorgeous. Look at her photograph. The electric company knows that. Nobody remembers the van show? I don't. The one I remember is <clears throat> they would, you know, uh, have parents sitting in one area and their kids are playing and somebody would come by and say, oh, I, can you help me with my puppy? You know, like. I oh, think that was, yeah, years. but that was, that was when they wanted to see about abduction. Yeah, but this had nothing to do yeah. with that. This was like. I know, but still, it was, yeah. you know, parents said, oh, no, my kid would never go. Oh, right, family. and they would all go. They'd say, oh, yeah, my kid knows all about that, and then they would do it, and the kids would go, I know. And the parents oh, yeah. would be like, oh, my gosh. Oh, right, my yeah. Goodness. Hodgepodge Lodge, I, I remember that, and I couldn't stand that show, even though, like, I never really watched it much, but whenever I would see it on people, oh, gosh, it's Hodgepodge Lodge. I couldn't take it. And now I, I, when I think about the law, I think it's comforting to think about what that looked like. Um, let's see. Love the green spade. Me and Joe Green. No, it wasn't that. Um, three, two, one contact. I remember that. And I remember the big blue marble. That's where I got my pen pal. And I saw somebody else got a pen pal on big blue marble. Um, and what, that was not PBS either. Is that a game show? Three, two, no. one contact. No. Three, two, no. It no, it was a, uh, it wasn't a game show. Mm -hmm. That rings a bell for some weird reason. And then Zoom. I loved Zoom. Zoom, 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 Zoom. Yeah. And that's where everybody learned to do this. Remember this thing? Uh, everybody thought it was so hard and all, she, and just, she did it in slow motion. Everybody was like, that's all she's doing? No. You never watched no. that? Okay. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm trying to see if somebody will mention the name of that. Um, you remember the commercials for Riff reading is fundamental? Yeah. That used to be on all the time. You have an incredible memory, Carla. Oh, yeah. Inside out and think about it. I don't remember think about it, but I guess the reading is fundamental or commercial. Yeah, well, I know, I know, but they were classics and oh, yeah. they they had the the book van and stuff. Yeah. Oh, House reading? Rock conjunction junction. What's your oh, function? Yeah. What's your yeah. function? I'm just a yeah. bill on Capitol Hill. Yeah, that mm -hmm. one, and the um all the ones about um like cheese and vegetables and oh yeah the food groups yeah yeah veggie veggie fruit, fruit. electric company and zoom magic garden i remember all of those i'm done but it's i just need to know what that one is with that guy in the van mr good body is that no mr good body no it can never be that he drove a van. Hmm. I don't know that. Was it local? <clears throat> I don't know. Local. Nobody Maybe says Bill on Capitol Hill, if that means anything to yeah, you. Yeah, it's just a bill on Capitol oh, Hill. It's con in conjunction. It's a uh, schoolhouse rock. We didn't watch much telly when we were kids. We'd be out playing, you know, when we were really, really young. Like. Remember the Laugh Olympics on Saturday morning when the cartoons, when they would have the Laugh Olympics? Mm -hmm. You don't remember that either? No. Wow. Okay. I never liked cartoons much. Not the Saturday morning ones? No, most of them. I, I like some, but very few. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Tom and Jerry, you can't beat them. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. 
I love them. And Tweety oh, Pie. Great. Sylvester and Tweety Tweety yeah. Pie. I hated the Road Runner. He used to scare me that fellow. <laughs> you know, when I was really young. There was something creepy about him and, and the and the, the, the fella chasing him. Oh, the coyote, Wiley Coyote. The Coyote, yeah. Oh, God. It's such a frustrating cartoon to watch. And it was the same ding dong with oh, the bombs and all that. You know? no, no, no. Acme, always from Acme. Acme, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. The Deputy Dog. Do you remember him? Yeah. And Sesame Street. We watched a lot of Sesame Street. Jesus, that'll tell you how long Sesame Street has been out. Right. I used to love Ernie. You know Ernie, the Muppet. Mm -hmm. The fella be going... Jerk. <laughs> I used to love him. Oh, gosh, I wish I could find out what the man in the van is. I used to love the Smurfs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, my eldest son used to... I used to watch it with him. Yeah, the Smurfs was a lovely cartoon, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And SpongeBob, my, my two youngest loved him. Oh, yes, we watched a lot of Yeah. Remember and that a lot of that, yeah. you, you, adults could watch it and find the humor as well. Remember that one thing hey, with that, that boy with the red him. balloon and it was but like... I didn't let him watch... Really? Uh, Simpsons. Mm -mm. Oh, The Simpsons was hilarious, but especially when it Boy, when it came out, alone. there was nothing like it on TV like that. It was yeah. priceless. Very good. Oh my Wasn't God! There's there something called the Great Space Coaster. No, do you no, remember the know. the Red Balloon, which was a 35 minute short, which followed the yeah. adventures of a young boy mm -hmm. in a 1956 French fantasy comedy drama. It was a 34-minute short which follows the adventures of a young boy who one day finds a mute red balloon. And it was uh, filmed in the neighborhood of Paris. And it used the, um, who is it, the actors as children as actors in the film. His son, Pascal, plays himself. The film won numerous awards, including an Oscar for the best original screenplay. Let's see. The young boy on his way to school one day discovers a large helium filled red balloon. As he plays with it, he realizes it has a mind and a will of its own. It begins to follow him wherever he goes, never straying far from him, and at times floating outside his apartment window as his mother will not allow it inside. The balloon follows him through the streets of Paris. And they draw a lot of attention and envy from other children as they wander through the streets. At one point, the balloon enters his classroom, causing an uproar from his classmates. That alerts the principal, who locks Pascal up inside his office. Later, after being set free, Pascal and the balloon enter, encounter a young girl with a blue balloon that also seems to have a mind of his own, just like his. One Saturday, the balloon is told to stay home while Pascal and his mother go to church. However, it follows them through the open window and into the church and they are led out uh, by a scolding beetle. As Pascal and the balloon wander through the neighborhood, a gang of older boys who are envious of the balloon steal it while Pascal is inside a bakery. However, he manages to retrieve it. Following a chase through the narrow alleyways, the boys finally catch up to them. I remember some lady with a cigarette. They hold Pascal back as they bring the balloon down with slingshots and stones before one of them finishes it off by stomping on it. The film ends as all the other balloons in Paris come to Pascal's aid and take him on a cluster balloon ride over the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, on, I remember yeah, seeing that. that somewhere on some popular yeah. in elementary classrooms. Yeah, I remember that. I'm trying to still find the, uh, um, see, that's a scene from it. You don't remember? People don't remember that? Look who's in chat, Carolyn. Oh, hang on. Who's in chat? Mike. Hi, Mike. Oh, I was, I, I, you know what? Before I was going to say, is it Mike? Yeah. I was going to say before <laughs> I even came in. Mike, where the freak have you been? Yeah, Hi, Mike. Mike. Where are you? Nice to see you. Come on, spill the beans. What have you been up to? 
Did you find a new woman? Or... Oh, stop it, Mike. We're not going to do that. Stop being ridiculous. Have you been cheating on us, Mike? Have you Did been you cheating find a new on us, Mike? Mike. Aren't you loved us, love? Yeah, where have you been, Mike? We've been asking for you every night, Mike. Yeah, come on, spin the beans. Where have you been? been looking I for saw you, you in scooters that night. We've been calling out to you, Mike. We've been calling out in desperation. Yes. She's known that. him her whole life, Mike. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, Mike, stop. He's talking about Ash Ashley Vestal. Who? Well, the Ashley Vestal oh. that we would, she said she was dating that guy. Remember, and she said he was sending like 10 dozen roses to the house and all that oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what yeah. What happened to her? <laughs> yeah. You love us, Mike? Well, where you have you been? Have You've been Mike, cheating on us. I've been asking you about you. I've been asking Whisper, <laughs> and uh, you just left us. And look at you, Mike. You're not even a member anymore. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, my God, Mike. That's horrible, Mike. What's happening? No, no, no. He's breaking up with us. <laughs> You're breaking up with us, Mike? Hi, 61. Hi. Hi, hi 61. Not nice, Mike. Hi, hi. Mike. Mike. Mm -mm. Pascal knew him for 15 months. Knew who? No, she didn't know him for 15 months, Mike. <laughs> no, she didn't. Oh, my gosh. We're going to replay that. She did not yeah. know him for 15 months. Maybe 15 days. I don't Maybe even 15 think it was hours. 15 days. Oh, my goodness, Mike. That's more like it. Oh, Lord. I don't know why you're upset with me, honestly. Yeah, we don't know. Come Call on, in and tell me why. Call yeah, in man. and tell me why. We this don't is ridiculous. know why, Mike. I never know Come why on, you're Mike. upset with me. You change like the wind. You tell me you love me one day, and then you hate me. Then you love me. Then you hate me. Then you love me, and then you hate me. It's an up and down roller coaster. This relationship sounds like a marriage card. And sounds I like know. a marriage. <laughs> I know. I know. He hates me. He loves me. He hates me. He loves me. Um, yeah. You gotta love someone before you can hate them. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> Very fine line be between them. Yeah. Hi, Christine. I love her surname, Ferrari. Oh, no, that's not how you pronounce it, is it? Is it? Ferreira. Christina Ferreira. 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 I'm from Colorado. 1.44 a.m. It's uh, 10 to 9 in the morning here. High 61. I've been up all night. Again. Do you want the number to tell us why you hate us? Come on, Mike. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Come on. I'll, I'll send, I'll send you the number to tell to yeah, yeah, tell us why you hate us. Oh, the sun is shining now. Gone very quiet, Mike. I'm sending in the number. <laughs> who's who's doing that with the teddy bear? Oh, Sharon. <laughs> oh God, I forgot. Oh yeah. Oh, I just heard from Deborah Kent. She said she's been having a lot of issues with the hospital and stuff. And oh. she's had problems with her diabetes. And then she came down with COVID and everything's okay. Oh, my God. She's missed the lives. And she's sending nothing but love and kindness. Oh, I'm glad. Um, if you're listening, uh, likewise, Deborah. Likewise, Deborah. Please, likewise. we miss you. And we love you. And we I get hope well you soon. see. Yeah, and get well soon. And, and come back and say hello to us. If you're there now, say hello. Because she just emailed me. We should hear from Peggy Johnson. We haven't heard from her in forever. I worry about her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, illnesses can make you very depressed, you know? I know. When you're in pain, it just drags you down. Like. Yeah. But then it's nice to get in with a group of, you know, lovely people. Well, it yeah. does help, you know? Mm -hmm. Helps me anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most definitely. Clear the bin. 
Let me see something here. What is this? Has he done a runner? Mike, have you done a runner? <laughs> yeah, he has. He has? He's <laughs> run away on us? Ah, uh, leave him off. What'd he say? He's leaving us? He's playing hard to get. <laughs> oh, my. He can't that's a quit. Woman's he job. can't quit us, though. He can't. Mike, that's a woman's job, not a man's job. He can't playing quit Playing hard us. to get. He At cannot. this hour of your life. Come on. What Julianne says, I've known Ashley's ex all my life. He is now with she. Oh my gosh. Wait, no, we're Was not talking about that. High school she knows Ashley. Oh, sister. this is crazy. You the know Ashley Vestal's. No, yeah, you know her ex? Yes, he is now a she. It was wow. one of your brother's high school friends. His younger oh, sister wow. and I attended the cotillion together. Oh my Very goodness. Nice are you kidding me, Julianne? And you just, are you saying you, you kept randomly, on yourself? <laughs> you randomly appeared here or did you hear that story and appear here? That is just crazy. No, Julianne. she's here all nice, Julianne. No, no, no. I know that's not what I mean. I mean, when Ashley told that story years ago, did Julianne, yeah. like, how did Julianne get here? I don't get it. Did you randomly hear her say that story one night? That must have been mind blowing. I can't even imagine that. If I knew somebody, I was just randomly sitting in a YouTube channel and somebody goes on panel and talks about somebody that I know personally, that would have blown my mind. But why, why did Mike bring that up tonight of all nights? Oh, but Mike's, not talk, Mike's talking about the other guy that Ashley was dating, not, not this guy. Yeah, but that's ages dating. ago. He's a stalker. Where is Ashley? Yeah, but I don't even see Mike wrote anything after he said, I, you guys know why I'm yeah. there. I didn't I see don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. He that. might be calling in. You kept silent because of privacy, but oh, did right. you randomly, just really randomly be here when she was saying that and then be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I know that, that guy now, woman? <laughs> That's so weird, Julianne. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a small world, girls. A very small world. Mike, I just sent you an email. Call in. You're not a coward. Where's Whisper to Me? I don't know. Whisper to me, get in here and tell Mike to call in. Where'd she go? That's my day to watch her. Oh. Yeah. All right. Are you still awake, Margo? No, I was here long before she came around. I'm from a small town. That is so bizarre, Julianne. I would have freaked out. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I, that would have thrown me over the edge. <laughs> Seriously, it would have. Oh, Lord. That's probably just as well that we didn't know at the time. Probably. But you don't know the new guy, well, the new old guy she was dating because it's over a year old now. And she enjoyed talking about it. Yeah, I don't know. Mike's pissed about it for some reason. It has to out. It's a sore spot for Mike. All right, okay. Why did she, did Mike like her or something? I think Mike said we gave the wrong advice or something about the dating. I don't know. Oh, shoot us, why don't you? God. But I don't know why he's angry with us right now. I don't get I it. I thought the last time he came on panel, he liked us. He did like us. That's why I'm saying it's a roller coaster with Mike. Uh, there could be somebody whispering in his ear. It's constant. Like, he likes us, he hates us. He likes us, he hates us. He likes us, he hates us. <laughs> yeah, I understand, Julia. They're good, fair. Yeah, no fair to exploit. No, who wants to exploit them? I don't want to exploit them. Yeah. 
Come was, on, Mike. We're not mind readers. We don't know what's going on. She was on. telling a story. Nobody wants to exploit them. She Where's was Jeanette story. lately? I haven't seen Jeanette. Jeanette. Oh, she's all right. Yesterday. She was here. Was she? Yeah. No, she's okay. Yeah, yeah. Jeanette. Yeah, she's been in here. Yeah. yeah. She was talking to Rambling Recruiter the other day, remember? Oh. They yeah. Were, they were calling she her Jane or something. Alex. Jean stream alex jones stream yeah yeah <coughs> Jeanette, da, 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 da. Let, me let me see if mike is emailing me mike at least email me and tell me why you hate me please Oh, thank God, it's Friday. That's all I can say. Just about. What's yeah. happening on Friday, Carol? No, I just like Fridays. It's just ever since I was a kid, I love Fridays. Yeah, you know, it's a weekend. Get off at the weekend from school, and then when we... I just love the weekends. Not that I'm doing anything or going anywhere, but... Um, no appointments. It, no appointments, yeah. And my family's home from work. Yeah, I don't know what to do with myself over the weekend. I should do something. I haven't been out for ages, you know. You get very set in your ways when you get older, don't you? Yeah. You spend your life around your kids, your grandkids, and you just... Forget to do things for yourself. Hmm. Ah, Julianne, I wouldn't worry about it. It is what it is. What did she worry about? She said she thought it was tacky for Ashley to publicize her personal family wishes. Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know. Yeah. Asher, I'm always doing that. <laughs> well, she said, yeah, here I am at the end. You see, that's what she said yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> It was funny. It was her story, you know. I don't know. It was her marriage. It was her story. I, yeah. I don't know. People are going to say what they want to say, you know. Her truth to and I suppose like on YouTube you would never have dream that anybody that you'd know would be listening like mm -hmm. you know that's right yeah yes Barb I do need a hobby I crochet <laughs> yes you do um, yes you do you do a no, great I think job I might then. go out over the weekend girls I might go out for maybe the you know you better take us somewhere I don't know yeah, how to I could do that. That would be bring cool. The, yeah, I, I don't know, Julianne. You know, if I mean... you feel up to it? Yeah. I don't know why. I'll try and that. see if there's any talent down there for you ladies to feast on. But I doubt it. <laughs> I sure you're here, all married. Uh, tea, please. Well, no, not all. Tea, 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 please. Two Scooter was here earlier in the night. You didn't see Two Scooter? She's well. She was on the panel two nights ago. And she was in the chat tonight. Two Scooter, can you please say hello? If you're, you're I know that you, you hear us. Just She's say hello. <laughs> go, go, if you rewind back, oh, the live chat won't show you. You'll see. She was talking with um, Casey Jones earlier. She's grand. Tea, please. Yeah. Tea, please. Now that. Just, yes, I will have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh my God, it's a glorious morning out there. Hi, Deborah Baron, how are you? I always get you mixed up with Debbie Bright. 
Oh, cat's got my tongue. Do we have any reptile? We have a code blue. Any reptile? Oh my God, cats! What are you? Code blue. Reptile uh -oh. experts. Deborah Van, where are you? What is the What is the issue, cats? She lives in Nicole, Australia. Nicole, Nicole has a snake. Jesus, what I kind of reptile? No what kind of reptile? I don't know anything about just snake, just the ball python. <laughs> Oh. A crocodile dundee? <laughs> most idle You'd be better off jumping breakfast. on the panel and saying something because it's going to be forever to read this in the chat. Where's Deborah Van? Oh, she's there. Hello, Sassy Darcy. Hi, Sassy. Hi, Sassy. Let's come up on panel. Well, that would freak me out now. Yeah, I couldn't live in Australia. Imagine going out the back and there's a snake out in the garden or something. Oh my God. I'd lose, or a crocodile. Oh, speaking of that bacon earlier, I think I might be putting on a nice little fry for myself. <laughs> that sounds good. Bacon, sausage, egg, pudding, beans, and brown bread. And then I go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> for a few hours. <laughs> White beans for breakfast. I never quite understood that. Oh, I love beans. They're good for you. They're full of iron. Oh, I, I like them. They're, they're lovely with a fried egg, Sharon. Really? Oh, yeah. They complement each other. Hi, little lady. I'm talking about baked beans now in tomato sauce, not... I mean, I don't know. In America, you eat different beans, do you? Yeah, I doctor them up. You what? I, you know, I... I add stuff to it, like molasses and brown sugar and mustard. Oh, really? Oh, wow. No, I'm just talking about just tinned beans and tomato sauce. What's going yeah. on, Cass? Tan, canned beans, but I, doc, like I said, I add stuff to them. Yeah, you, yeah. Cats with Interesting. Them. Yeah, and that would spice them up, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hi, cats. What's going on? <laughs> Come on, girls. Tell us about these reptiles. Uh, just breathing. <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I think it's a blue tongue lizard that I have. Um, I was like oh. mowing the mowing the lawn. Yeah. And um, I kind of like I went over this spot, like mowed the lawn, went over the spot, and then I saw something move, and um, it was the lizard. Yeah. It doesn't look like I've. Um, oh my god. It's like untouched, like it was under sort of under the grass sort of a bit, so it, it didn't get cut or anything. Like it okay. looks fine. All right. Um, but I'm not sure, like, if it's in shock or did oh, they wow. hibernate? Oh, God. Or, I why? Yeah. What is it doing? Um, hang on. I'll, I'll just, I'll get it. All right. Fall, I've fallen in love really fast, but I'm hopeless. Oh. <laughs> so what did you call him? A blue <laughs> lizard? A blue, a blue it's one? Not, it's not even furry and it's gorgeous. <laughs> Has he got an orange head? Well, because yeah. I've, I've seen these before, like I've um I've got all sorts of things around here, and they normally move pretty fast. <laughs> like with this one, um, I picked it up and it just snuggled into me, and I was like, 
No way. Like, oh. Like not, oh gosh, something's not right. <laughs> okay, it's probably in shock. Yeah, what's like? Should I be keeping it warm? Because it yes, cold. definitely. Yeah, but it is like a they like warm yeah, and they like... like a light too. They like to bask usually. Oh really? Yeah, keep yeah. them warm. So it's got um. Like maybe if you have a heating pad or something, you could put it under. Yeah, I will. Um... Good idea. Yeah. Deborah said to call local wildlife conservation. They'll help you out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. She's What's attached to him. She's after falling and over them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but people keep them as pets, don't they? Oh, wait, let me sure spotlight. Hold on. Yeah, let me spotlight. Where is he? Oh, oh no. Hold on, can someone highlight her? I did. I, I won't, like, shine a light on him or anything, because I was sort of... Um... Is it dark where you are? He looks okay. Oh, yeah, it's just starting to get. He really might just dark. be. He might uh, be sleeping. He's trying to blend in. He likes to be. Yeah, if it's getting ah. dark, he may. Uh, he may be gone now. Like you and hurt you. And you know what? If he's getting cold, that might make him slow down. So I would should put I a little heating pad should underneath I warm him. him up? Yeah, I think he needs to be warmed up. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, do you know what, what kind of lizard he is, Katz? Do you know the, he's, um, I was going to say, do you know the make? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, what make is it? <laughs> well, he looks like a, a 2000. Make model, please. Is he, what is he, a yeah, 2000, yeah, 2021. <laughs> yeah, it's a normal model. It's a, um, it, it looks like a blue tongue lizard. Hang on, I didn't actually. A blue tongue lizard. I'll Google it I here. I know. See if it can bite her. We don't want one that can bite her and hurt her. Yeah, an, East, an eastern blue tongue lizard. I know. No, these ones are fine. Yeah. Are you saying it's an eastern blue tongue lizard? Um, eastern, yeah, probably. Is it a blue tongue skink? Blue tongue lizards are the oh largest members of the skink family. Skink lizards yeah. have overlapping scales that are usually smooth and contain small plates of bone. The eastern blue tongue lizard is a silvery gray with a broad dark brown or blackish band across the back and tail. Individuals on the coast usually have a black stripe between the eye and the ear which may extend along the side of the neck. The blotched blue tongue is dark chocolate brown to black with large pink cream or yellow blotches on the back and a tail banded, let's see, in the same colors. The eastern blue tongue can grow to almost 600 millimeters in total length of which 360 millimeters is the head and body. Blue tongues usually live in the open country with lots of ground cover such as to sake grasses or leaf litter. They shelter at night among leaf litter or under large objects on the ground, such as rocks and logs. Early in the morning, blue tongues emerge to bask in sunny areas before foraging for food the warmer parts of the day. Like all lizards, blue tongues do not produce their own body heat and rely on the warmth of their surroundings to raise their body temperature. Blue tongues maintain a body temperature of about 30 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius when active. During cold weather, they remain inactive, buried deep wow. in their shelter sites, but on sunny days, they may emerge to bask. The eastern blue tongue occurs throughout much of the New South Wales, west to about Cobar in the Sydney region. The eastern blue tongue occurs on the coastal plain and in the lower blue mountains. Blue tongues eat a variety of plants and animals. Blue tongues are not very agile, and the animals they eat are mostly slow moving. Their teeth are large, and they have a strong jaw muscles that can crush snail shells and beetles. When threatened, blue tongues turn towards their threat, open their mouth wide, stick out their broad blue tongue that contrasts vividly with the pink mouth. This display, wow. together with the large size of the head, may frighten off predators. If that does not, if they do not go away, blue tongues may hiss and flatten their body out, making themselves look bigger. A frightened blue tongue may bite if it's picked up. If it's handled roughly mm. by its tail, eastern blue tongues, particularly young ones, may drop their tail. Okay. Yeah, but it also it... says that it says that they're generally docile, 
gentle, quiet, and easily tamed, and can make a very good reptile pet for beginners. Look how big it is. So do you think that, that that's what it is by looking at it? Because I don't um, actually have I'm a... looking again. Let me see. Let me see. It. Um... Comparison. Because um, he's kind of a greeny one. I'll put an image of Oh, there. God, we don't even know if he is. Look, that's Good the image. It kind of that. looks like it. Look. Does he like turn yeah. Ponytail. Yeah, it looks like that. Look, I have the. Image. Oh yeah, he does. He does. Yeah. yeah. He <laughs> needs to be warmed up. He needs I to think. be warmed up. Uh, yeah, I think he's very cold, probably. Yeah, but that's great that you can tame them. I'd bring him indoors and keep him warm during the night. So, yeah. what do you think he was run over or what? Yeah, I was mowing the lawn, and um, where I'd just gone over a patch of grass, um, he came out from where I just mowed. Poor little but, guy. But it was um, a, pa a bit of grass that was like, um, it, was, it was kind of, it was on the edge, so there's lots of dead grass from where I put lawn clippings before. Are you but, sure um, he's not dead? Oh, no, no he's he, not. he looks he's not. dead. He does no, he's look not. dead. He does he... look dead. And and you don't see his belly, his belly's not... Um... I thought he's he looked dead before, and I picked him was up and he scared the demons out of me. Yeah, but just watch, watch he doesn't bite you, because it says that they, they've got strong yeah. jaws. Yeah, well, you can, just... I can't, you can't see him breathe, or, you know, the way the belly goes up and down. Hey, little guy. Was he what caught was with the lawnmower? As far as I can see, no. Like, hang on. Okay. Let's just have a look. Yeah. Just be careful, because they, they have a strong bite. If he, no, this one's this one's just a baby. But does he feel warm? Does he does he feel warm or colder? Cold. He feels cold. He looks, oh, he don't look like it's alive. <laughs> Are you sure he's not dead? Yeah. Check. Oh God, my nerves. <laughs> I don't think he's alive. I don't think yeah. he's alive. He's okay. Uh, he's okay. Yeah. Maybe he's pretending. Do they hibernate? Is he pretending he's dead? Um, you know the way some okay. animals. It's oh, okay like underneath as well. Did I get his? Is, can you see his little hands? Are they okay? Yeah, but where is he breathing? I know. He's, he's he looks legs. like he's already getting stiff. Hmm. Sorry, don't want to freak you out, Kat. Oh, she's in a Oh, it's not your head fault head. if she is. He's still moving. Oh, he's still moving. Okay. I think you yeah, need I, to I warm. Get, get him in yeah. the warm. I think you need to warm him up, cats. Do you have a heating? Warm him up, cats. Yeah. A heating pad or something. Yeah, don't put him in the microwave. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, put a kid, yes. Do you have a heating pad? Oh my god, you don't want to know, okay? What? I said you don't want to know. <laughs> How do you oh. mean? Whether you've got a heating pad? Yeah. <laughs> Just take a towel, get a towel, put it in the microwave for about a minute, and it'll warm it up. Wrap you a minute. Yeah, yeah but then that'll go cold fast. I've just, got him, I've just got him between my cleavage um, where it's really warm. <laughs> <laughs> girl, okay. you crazy. Come here, you bite there, girl. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I might be fine. a bit nervous. Yeah. You're fine there. It's if he thinks now. you're his mama, be careful. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Deborah keeps writing in chat several times to call the wildlife conservation that they'll help you. They'll tell you what to do with him. This thing is oh, wild, yeah. did it? I mean, it ain't. That's a good idea. Yeah, um, put a towel they... in the dryer. She's you need to get. Before. You need to get it warm. Yeah. I mean, real warm, fast. Yeah, and okay. warm. Yeah. Put a towel in the dryer if you have a dryer. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That's a good idea because um, they helped me with the possum before. Yeah. But do you yeah, have do a bring them cats. Do yeah. you have a heating pad? Yeah, have you a nice warm blanket? Have you, it's... Yeah, I've just, I've just I'll turned put on them under um, a duvet a if you have a spare blanket. bed. Put them into a bed. Put the duvet yeah. over them. Yeah. They, they get a lot of warmth afterwards. If you have an yeah. electric blanket on your bed or something. Oh. Just put a towel down over it. 
I was going to say, he doesn't seem to be moving much, but he's just bitten onto my bra. <laughs> I'm telling you, watch yourself, girl. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> he might fight off, or you know. He's your brave girl. It's girl. not a pain. It's wild. It'll pro- it might bite you. It, it, it said there that he's got a very strong bite. Okay, it's a risk I'm willing to take. I feel terrible. Like... It's not your fault. Or how would you know there was a lizard in the grass? <laughs> he's the same color as the grass. And he's not cut, so. Who knows why he's echo my ears? Yeah, he's in shock. So some animals pretend they're dead. Yeah. When they're when they're scared, you know. Yeah. Or else he's like the feel of you. <laughs> kind of looks like a snake when you can't see his hands. Do you see yeah. him breathing? <laughs> he keeps moving every now and then. But I can't. Yeah, get get a bit to the heat. How yeah. is it there? All right, I, I'm gonna um go um give the wildlife people a call. Um, yeah. It might it might be like the the turtle thing. Um, my friend that didn't know turtles hibernated and lied to the kid and said they're just sleeping and then they because they thought the turtles had died. Yeah. And um, oh. they didn't want to upset the kids, so they just left the turtle in the tank and then it came back to life. And they were like, oh my god, good thing we didn't get rid of it. Um, and found out that turtles hibernate, so oh wow, yeah. oh my what god, could you imagine, they can imagine if they bury them? Oh wow, what time is that there, hon? Um, nine o'clock, oh, nine just after six um, p.m. Oh, would wow. they be open now? Go ahead really? and call because she wanted to see if you can get somebody to actually. Yeah. 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 Like her the or, or the, your local or a rescue yeah. center. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. No problem. Keep, keep us informed, cats, will you? Yeah. Uh, I, no, I was just like totally freaking out because um, I don't think I thought I feel terrible. <laughs> don't be um, feeling terrible. My God. All right. uh, Rest I'll let you know what happens. <laughs> yeah, do, do, All do, right. do. We'll talk to you later, though. Okay, chat. I, I think we're going to let you go for the night, um, but we'll see you tomorrow. Um, Julianne, have a good day. Work tomorrow. All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for um, coming in. And Casey Jones will play for, pray for Noah. Yeah. All right. And, uh, Thanks for joining us. Everybody. All right. Love you guys. Thank you. God bless. And Mike, stop being mad at us. <laughs> yeah, he didn't do nothing. Boy. <laughs>